Hey, everybody, it's Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. Welcome to the Giant Bombcast, episode 794. And the Giant Bombcast is powered by NTXT. I am your host, Jan Ochoa. Joining me, as always, co-captain of the ship. He doesn't carry any cash on him, so don't even try and approach him after a live show in the streets. Jeff Grubb. I just keep thinking that Phil Spencer's probably seen Mike Minotti's feet. Just keeps going through my head over and over and over again. Oh. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, we And, and uh, the, the, the big man himself who has so much FOMO, but no FOMO over fear of mitching out on Mitch's feet. Jeff Backlar. <laughs> That's true. It's the only thing I did not miss from SGF is having a look at that guy's bare feet. No, thank you. <laughs> Would have been worth the trip, though. Sure. Would have been, would have been worth the trip. Yeah. Uh, and we have the most normal man in games media. The most normalist, <laughs> uh, as established by Snowbike Mike of Kinda Funny. Dan Riker. Wait. By comparison now, I've got my own Dan, so I'm a normal guy. I got Mitch. <laughs> so I'm suddenly yeah, normal. That, works. that is, is what it feels like, sort huh? of irony here, is that Mike's presence somehow merges you more into normalcy does it not does it not nudge me closer that's true it, just, average honest, it unhinges you know? us all more from reality is what it does yes. like the fact that you guys are multiplying you know yeah. it's like it, when your your stuff moves over ever so slightly because of the wind it's like oh did, did i move this it's like yeah, oh no this has always been this way bit. yeah yeah he, he wasn't he wasn't pitched this way like he wasn't <laughs> I did not see you this say that like we developed him. Yeah. yeah, like I just thought he was like a dorky news guy that like Disney yeah. too much. There's way like, more going on there. I'm just like, here's an endlessly happy lad who's just yeah, what bringing the said? energy. Like I'm no, like, okay, yes, you know when I met Mitch last year at Summer Game Fest, I was scared because I thought he'd be mad at me because we took grub, and sure. then he turned out to be a very sweet gentleman, and then I learned everything else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's still a sweet gentleman. Act. How could you prepare someone for him? It takes I some don't. time. It Same took, way I prepare people for you. I've known him for like a you. year now. I'm still mm, figuring shit out. That's true. That's Same true. way I prepare people for you. I go over like legalities. I go liabilities. Yeah, I'm like, listen, yeah. you can't. Mm -hmm. You got to just take everything with a grain of salt, that kind of thing. Sure. I got friends like you, you know? Yeah. yeah. This makes me think that there's like a different side of Grub that we we don't know because him and Minotti have been marinating in each other's like uh, ex friend juices, you know, yeah, for, yeah. For forever now. I feel like I get Grub. <laughs> yeah, I try to. I keep it on the surface. If there's anything hidden, it's hidden for good reason. Legal liabilities and such, as we talked about. Oh, yeah. You know, you know something that I love about you, Jeff Grubb. I never know when you're recording video or taking your phone out to take a picture. Like, it's, yes, I like to. Uh, I like happening. to catch you. It's Sneaky happening boy. all the time. I like to get boy. you. Yeah, get you those candids. Give me those candids. You know, I love candids. Grubb would be the you best never... paparazzi in the yeah, world. I think I've never seen him hold a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> sure, that's, that's, that's true. Yeah, the, okay. the, fi the files say PXL, but I feel like I've seen him hold up a razor before, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can make that happen. I think I have one in my drawer right here. It's not, don't, don't threaten me. <laughs> well, Summer Game Fest happened not last week, but two weeks ago now? Is that true? Is that what happened? I guess so. I don't know time anymore. Basically... I, went, I decided yeah. to do the most relaxing thing after going on a very rigorous work trip, and I decided to go camping. Uh, nice. Well, I, I saw the outdoors. I have 20 mosquito bites on each arm. Yeah. I don't feel the best. I'm very itchy right now. Well, you gotta get that. Uh, there's like the Benadryl spray. Uh, we, we tried some of that in New Orleans, and uh, my wife had some, some bites and said it instantly cooling action hmm. uh, made her feel way better. See, so you know I did the. Got? Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. They got these, um, they're like, they're, I don't think there's anything to them aside from the fact that they're like round fabric stickers that you put on top of your bites. Okay. And I think what they just do is like, they allow you to scratch and not damage oh, your skin. That sounds oh, dope. Oh, so you get the feel, okay. of, but without the bad, uh, yeah, the because bad effects, like, you're not supposed to itch it. Like yeah, a condom. you should scratch. Like, there's no, nothing no, better no, than like scratching. Like yeah. Well, sh sure, but like, what's better than scratching a mosquito bite on your foot or something, no, right? Like oh, nothing. It's, but you, you just feel like, bad well, about it. I wish I could feel like this forever, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so that is smart. I like. Yeah, that. 
Yeah, I forget what they're called, but like they're sort of like webbed in a weird way. They look like mini spider webs, but they're great. I don't know if they're fixing the bite, but they're letting me feel what I want to feel without, you know, making myself bleed. So that's cool. So what I did is I remember hearing about the old wives tale of using a hot metal spoon and pressing that against your bites and that it, that hot would just Hot metal spoon. Okay, maybe I'm the only you one that's heard yourself? of this. Yeah, so basically <laughs> you take a hot metal spoon, you press it against the mosquito bite, and then it's supposed to like uh like kill off the the itchy skin cells or whatever on top. <laughs> but I only had a big ass metal spatula that I just sure. heated over the fire and just pressed against my skin a bunch of times. Meanwhile, my partner is looking at me horrified of like, why are you <laughs> why are you branding yourself? I need this. this I need to feel like something. I went to the Smithsonian touring exhibit as a child and somehow got a tick on my balls and my mom had to heat a needle and put yeah, the hot needle against my balls. Is that the similar concept? No. Uh, no, okay. it's not, Dan. We were talking about itchy things and you're like, I got to talk about bugs and hot metal helping the situation. I thought no. that's what that's the same type of thing. You, you took a very generous leap there, I think. I don't uh, have a tick on my balls anymore. All right, Thank how's you. everyone else doing other than that? You know, I like catching up with my friends on Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing nice. good. How's everyone feeling? Everyone's recovered from uh, yeah, Summer Game so. Fest? <laughs> That's one yeah, way to put it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, was a, it was like we, a week ago we were there still in L.A. And then uh, oh we traveled God. home. And then, yeah, so it's like, I, I think I'm recovered. That long weekend wasn't too bad. It was nice to have three days off and then... Uh, get back to it but I, I don't know i'm still like I, th I still feel like behind on everything uh where it's I, like oh man so much you know and then we're doing so much stuff here it's like i'm trying to get back on our normal track and it's like well that's not going to happen yet either so i don't know just trying to get back in the groove of things still i just i just want to say while we have a uh, a moment here with everyone in the room uh watching from far away was not easy to do but i am just so impressed with you guys and everyone else oh, out there i thought it was so fun. it was so good it was so fun to watch and entertaining, and I, I wish I could have been there, but man, it was just so great to see. So you, great job on behalf of everyone watching Thanks, back, and listening. I can speak for them. Thanks, Dad. Really, really amazing work. Thank you. Felt extremely positive there mm -hmm. in the studio and at the show the entire time. Uh, yeah, it felt felt awesome. And yeah, Grub yeah. and Jan just fucking killed it. It was, yeah, just Dan, amazing. don't sell yourself short, big dog. Not at all. I was running around putting out some fires, but yeah, I think you guys were doing the heavy lifting. Nonsense. Uh, nonsense. The most stable structure is a triangle, baby. Yeah, that's right. It's the triumvirate. Um, <laughs> it was good. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad we did it. Uh, we'll do it again. It was uh, definitely something that everyone... It was a, it's been great to see the response, and like everyone said, it's been so positive. So, yeah, definitely something that we want to take ownership of and keep doing in the future. Yeah. Uh, I think I was telling Bacalar last week uh that i think i like video games again <laughs> I, I think everything's like rekindled now you know it's like oh cool it's a good reset point yeah yep. batteries recharged yeah. it's like it, it's about uh it, like we realize it's like yeah, it's about the people right um yeah. i played that uh i played a demo this week i'm sure we'll get to eventually but uh, uh because i talked to ben star it was just like this guy's so cool I and he does the voice of clive in final fantasy 16 and i'm just like i want to play it because ben star is cool like, fuck everything else. Like, the, there's just this cool person that worked on this thing, and I want to support that. So uh, there was a lot of that, those feelings coming out of it, where it's just like, ah, it's, it is about the people, and there's so many connections that we have to these games now that it's uh, been fun to just be like, yeah, that's how I'm going to experience these things now. It, it kind of rekindled an element of the industry for me, too, where it's like, for the last, like, couple years, I've been trying to, like, back away from social media and all this, and I literally muted everybody and everything, and then I saw all these people at Summer Games Fest, and I was like, I haven't heard from you in years, because I've mm -hmm. had you all muted. And then I was like, wait a minute, I like this industry, and I like the people in it, like, so I've been, like, slowly, like, going back and being like, oh, yeah, yeah I want to hear from them, I would like to hear from them, yes, okay, so... <laughs> Yeah, it turns out a lot, a lot of cool people in this industry. You can, you can like, slowly mute them all again until next year, and then when you see yeah. them all again, you just unmute them again. It's, right. it's the cycle Oh, right, you. I like hearing the things. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, comparing it to last year's Summer Game Fest, last year was, like, uh, like when a, a store is just opening, and it's, like, you get all these people that you, you kind of recognize. I'm like, oh, hey, I know you. Cool. Oh, this is fun. Cool. The store's open now. But I think Michael Heim said it the best that this year was like a college campus where it's like, mm -hmm. yo, I got my meeting with uh, with Bando, uh, Bandai Namco. Uh, I'm going to I might skip that meeting, though, because I'm hanging out with the boys over here. 
Yeah. And it just felt like a it just felt like a cool campus or whatever. Sorry, Bagler, to make you feel like you're missing out on more, but like I don't know. Well, it was just helping. great to see just like a bunch of uh, Twitter mutuals. I'm like, I know you. You're very well, there's, tall. There's the social <laughs> pressure too, though, because you have to. It's like a wedding reception where you know a bunch of people, and it's like in your head, you're like, I need to go to the bathroom, and it's across the room. But it's like there's going to be six pockets of people that I can't just walk past and ignore. So it's like, ah, oh, fuck, I got to stop and talk to. Them. So you got to plan out everything if you want to eat. Plan an hour in advance so you can like talk to people on the way there. But uh, yeah, that's it a really was like that. That's the sure. benefit of carrying a camera around with you is that you just like frustratedly look at your camera, just like oh, ah, and uh, just geez, like yeah. huff darn it. to the next darn place darn to just it. avoid yeah. people. It's like oh, yeah, you know, the SD card. Oh, he's, he's working. He's working. Stay out of his way. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, we saw a couple things at Summer Game Fest. Thought it'd be cool to talk about said games. First, I think I oh god, I keep clicking on the wrong document. Uh, Jeff Grubb, I think you were the only one that checked this out. Yeah. Remnant uh, 2. Yeah, I did. I, I played it. I played it while, um, Snowbike Mike and the, the kind of funny boys were playing across the room, Crash Team, uh, Crash Team Rumble. And so it's like, it was very hard to hear because they were screaming and hollering and hooting the whole time. But what I did play mm. of Remnant 2 was very, very good. It's a good looking game. Uh, they're making it Unreal Engine 5. It's still the sort of... Hey, what if a Soulsborne game was more about shooting guns than anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like even leaning harder in that direction than before. Like I, there's still a melee. Um, if you don't aim down sights and you hit the attack button, the left mouse button, you are going to do a, a, a melee attack. But most enemies, you are almost certainly going to be engaging with your with your uh, with the projectile weapon, and it just feels really good. It looks incredible. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play with someone else, and and all the enemies are just super interesting. I I, I was really really into it, really impressed by what they did. Uh, it's a game I'm like, yeah, this is you know a three player game like this. Running through it, the first remnant uh, I only played a very tiny little bit of, uh, but I enjoyed that. I think what's going to happen here is like this game is going to have built a lot of momentum since that first one, and this one's going to come out, and I think it's really going to pop off and be very very successful. Uh, it's one of those ones where I kind of like, as soon as it's out, I think we should all just kind of hop in there, play together. Cause I think it'd be a good time. So oh, yeah. yeah, really, uh, really happy with it. Uh, and you know, the demo, uh, kind of, sh it showed off, you know, the basics what you would want to see, like the basic combat, a couple of boss fights. Um, and it was fun to try to like, uh, uh, see if I could actually get through one of those boss fights on the show floor. And like, I almost did, but couldn't quite do it, but I enjoyed every second of it for sure. I don't know why I always get, um, remnant the series remnant confused with Hunt Showdown, and they're two sure. radically different games. Yeah, I, I get it though. I, are they both three players, like three player teams? I know the Hunt yeah. Showdown is like a a bigger thing, but yeah, uh, I, I I get I get why you do that a little bit. Uh, they like occupy a similar space in my brain as well. But no, remnant is definitely the one. It's like that. It's three players. You're running through mostly flat areas and taking on difficult enemies with your guns and the guns are uh you know you really got to pay attention to how much ammo you have in there and you got to be ro reloading on time and you got to be switching between weapons uh when you're in the middle of a fight and managing that stuff that's like where the, the challenge really comes from uh and here it's like okay they're gonna take that take those, take those ideas amp up the encounters and really, really improve, I think, the level design. Like, there's a lot more verticality, a lot more stuff happening in the air. Uh, and, and so it's just, it's way more, uh, there's much more going on, and it's way more interesting. So it's like, they've really just evolved the idea. And again, it just looks so good that I was, I was having a really good time. Uh, speaking about Crash Team, what, what, Rumble? What, uh, yeah, the Crash party? Team Rumble, I think. The MOBA? Uh, it's kind of in that, not really, but it's a team game. It's not like anything else. Really. Is it like a MOBA party? Like a Mario yeah, Party MOBA? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I mean, I've, does I've, that I didn't sound play good? It. Hang on. Does that sound good? I don't know. <laughs> I don't it? know. I don't want to manifest Someone who's this. Who's never really played a MOBA? It's... Would a Mario Party MOBA be a good idea? Oh. Uh, that sounds like a terrible like curse upon the land, like a blight. Yeah. Uh, can... Oh, can you imagine? Mario's been in a lot of genres, and he's shined in pretty much all of them. Uh, puzzle Crash games, Rumble party is, games, is RPGs. Out today. This is out today, so maybe we could just like find a time to play this. Crash Team Rumble and find out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, but oh. I really don't know. I actually don't know what to make of it. I just remember we were walking the show floor for a video, which will come out soon, I swear to God. Uh, and then we just see the Crash Team Rumble team playing and just yelling at the top of their lungs, and we were wondering if they were an esports team. And then lo and behold, we turn the corner, see the other side of the station, and it's just Tam and Lucy. That just yep. beat the team. 
Just them. Well, the people calm. that were yelling were all wearing bandicoot jerseys. Yes, so I think they might have been uh, vested. They might. Yeah, they might have been experienced. Yet Tam and Lucy, yes. as always, just absolutely uh, destroyed them. Uh, uh, Sean says it's like a big power stone with an objective. At least oh? that's what it seems like to him. Oh, so no. I, I, that sounds pretty cool. How have they not come back to Power Stone? They're cowards. Yeah, <laughs> people that, it's universally loved, right? Yeah, I think, I think so. I think right? So, yes. Yeah. Man. I mean, we say I've that, never heard a bad like, word about Power Stone. Yeah, but maybe they, like they, they just never sold it. But they were on Dreamcast, right? And then uh, so it holds up. It's still super fun. Yeah. Oh, I, they should give it another chance. Okay. Uh, uh, gentlemen, please help me out here. I think it's a Dreamcast game. You control a robot. It felt like a two joystick thing. It was third. Gaio? Virtual on? Virtual on. That's what it was. Ah. Was that game cool? I never had a Dreamcast. Yes. No, it's cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, sick. Okay. I like it a lot. All right. Well, I need to maybe revisit that, virtual on. Is it virtual on or virtua on? I think I want virtual on. With virtual L. on. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's not okay. a lot more virtua. There's virtua fighter, yeah, Sega, virtua Sega, cop. Sega, like Tennis. trademarked virtua, right? Wait, yeah. there was a virtual was virtua. racing, right? No, it was virtua racing, I think. So is it all virtua? Huh. Always has What's virtual? Uh, okay. No. Well, what are you asking? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying what games are virtual? Like, okay, has the, sure. the word virtual oh, in the title? That's such a relief. Um, I think virtual on <laughs> what is... What do you think I meant? Uh, the like, concept of virtual. The concept of virtual yeah, because that's is where what I thought goes, you were asking. I'm a video gaming professional. You think I don't know what virtual <laughs> means? Yes. Uh, <laughs> was it? I think it was Virtua Soccer as well, with a, without the L. I, man, I Virtua can't keep track. Kids. What was tennis? I think that's Virtua. Virtua, Virtua. Yeah, Virtua. Definitely Virtua. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Huh. And the Isle of Tortuga, which I don't know why popped in my head as an island in Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, of course. Vir virtual just means a work. I don't okay. know, right? Uh, what I don't, else we, all right. I mean, going, yeah, from, sure. going from Am one... Wrong? Am I wrong? Yeah. No, you're not wrong. You're not That's wrong. Like that. You're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't just boil. All just... right. Going from one pit to another <laughs> pit. So uh, one of the things I checked out at uh, Summer Game Fest was Magic the Gathering, the Lord of the Rings expansion. I think I'm now a Magic the Gathering fan and subsequently also a Lord of the Rings fan now. Um, okay. I have a much bigger problem with the Lord of the Rings part than I do the magic part. I just need to get that out in the, in the front here. Yo, like there, there were packs of everyone on the staff is about Lord of the Rings, except for Lucy who loves it. There it's were just like, yo, they, they gave out like all these like booster packs in the summer game fest. Why like, are swag those not pack. sleeved? What are we doing? I don't know what first, any of these dudes free, are. <laughs> like who Wait, is, is that, this is just is a mountain. All... So it's Lord of the Rings magic crossover? Is that what this is? No, these are just like miscellaneous booster packs, but the Lord of the Rings expansion pack, they're, I think, I believe they're putting out two decks, a hero's deck and a villain's deck, which mm -hmm. are all like blinged out with Lord of the Rings. So you'll you'll have like a land card, right? That's what those are? Lands? Right? Land. I don't know. Land party? I don't fucking know. Like, like these guys? No, Dan. Like, like okay, these ones, yeah. right? Lands? Okay, yeah, there's yeah. Two. That's yeah, mana. Nice mana, cool right. And that four decks Your plus sandwich. an entire set. Thank you, uh, Reg, Regvalus. Uh But they'll have like little Lord of the Rings dudes on, on the cards and stuff. And then uh, we, Emma from Fandom and I got to talk to the art director. and He was a really cool dude. And then I talked about, I asked him like, yo, so what was with the decision to uh, make Aragorn black? And he was like, yo, you put a brown dude in charge and I'm going to make people brown. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that That's rules. awesome. And then that alone was able to sell me on everything. Uh, but man, I don't know. I don't even like Lord of the Rings that much, but the, the art looked really cool. I know Dan scoffed at the idea of second breakfast, but I, any type of mm. breakfast is cool to me. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at these freaks. Like, what is what is a warm welcome? There, there's this guy named, like, Phylath, world, world sculptor. What is his deal? Me. He Show sculpts me. worlds. Like, Right? Like, what does that's, he do? All right, that's cool. But that, that, yeah, that's cool. I mean, wait, so, so, all right, listen. Please. What is it about this? Is it just the card collecting angle of it? Or, and obviously, like, the cool characters? Like, are you going to pursue this in a meaningful way? Or are you just going to, like, make it a money slash time suck? And, <laughs> you know. I got plenty it, of those, baby. Yeah, you saved up that. I get that. 
what, what's it gonna what's it gonna mean to you? Like, uh, how are you going to do this? I think for me personally, I what was most appealing besides the art was uh, the playing of the game because it seemed like oh. not super complicated, but like oh, there's enough steps going on in here, and matches right. last longer than um, your normal Pokemon card game. And the state of the Pokemon card game, I've kind of have to push myself away from because the collecting aspect has not broken the game, but has really affected uh, how folks are approaching it now. Uh, it's the game is like not even it's a thing. It, it's not even secondary. It's like it, tertiary like, at this point. I've never seen it played. I've never seen a Pokemon card game be played, and I have thousands of these cards in my home i've never seen it played i've never seen a video of it played i've never seen kids play it they don't give a shit they just want v max <laughs> charizard gold boys is what they want they want fat gay pikachu is... you know i mean hey yeah, i also want yeah. fat gay pikachu yeah hell yeah that's 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 the chaser right there but like i don't get it uh, it's not part of the game's not part of it anymore. That way, bye bye. I want to say like five years ago, six years ago. And uh, I didn't realize how uh, into it Emma was, and then Emma just started going off about all these different like deck compositions. And I'm like, yes, okay, I'm going to need you to tell me all of this in detail again when I can actually <laughs> properly absorb all of this. And maybe you teach me how to play magic, and then. All of a sudden, run into the bo run into the good old GameSpot boys of uh, John Luke and Jake Decker, and they were like, "So, uh, so, so you wanted a, uh, so you want to get into magic, huh? huh?" Oh my god! And so then the corrupting element and en enablers. And then I yeah, think they're just lying in wait until until a moment of weakness, and then they snapped right onto you. I don't go into the office, but I'd like to go see the boys. You know, maybe sure. maybe we'll have a magic night. Maybe. Oh, no. And then I saw that uh, poor John Luke was already corrupted and pre-ordered the Lord of the Rings sets. <laughs> so, uh, oh man, it's it's gonna hey, be that a Lord time. of the Rings set is in uh, the video game Magic the Gathering right now. You could spend one hundred dollars on it. So, uh, yeah, I, I may get have, it. Look, I may have downloaded MTG Arena already and then there like fiddled is. around. You know, I there get it. it was it was it Rory was really into? Uh, oh yeah. It's, Oh right? yeah, and there's always got to be one on staff, so this was inevitable. Oh no, and he's probably hiding somewhere under like a mouse here or something. He was he just popped It'll up the other pop day. Up. Oh, Hi Rory, was, like in chat. Hi Rory, Very wherever you are. Place. Hi Rory, I know you hear yeah. us right now. Yeah, <laughs> his monitor is wide enough; he can fit fit us on like at least That's a quadrant right. <laughs> of it. Oh God, I just someone just keep me away from magic. And then like Emma d messaged me today. It's like uh, super excited about the Lord of the Rings set. I'm like ah. Yeah, I'll dive in with you. Let's let's go. Let's go, homie. Oh no. Um, anything else from Summer Game Fest that we would like to talk about? No, we talked about Disney Illusion Island last week, right? I think we yeah. did. I think and we, we talked did. extensively about Mortal Kombat, which was yeah, yeah, right. Highlight. That's yeah. right. That's the highlight. I'm like, I just there was a couple that I think we missed remnant to Magic the Gathering. We did. But we talked Sonic. about Disney Illusion. We, we covered yeah, Sonic, Sonic, right? Yeah. yeah. No. I realize yeah. I don't know how to spell illusion. I L L U S I O N. It wasn't a it wasn't a contest, Dan. But thank you. <laughs> I won it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Disney Illusion Island is great. It's cool. It's the um, I'm I'm excited for it in, in a way that I didn't think I would be excited for it. Uh, Steam Next Fest is going on, popping off right now, gentlemen. Yes. And there's quite a bit to go through and talk about. Grub, you've checked out Fortune's Run. Yes, I, I, I did a whole bunch. Have you, have you guys downloaded any demos so far? Uh, I've from, checked from out Fest? two, I believe. Okay. I, uh, I did Fortune's Run, uh, uh, among a bunch of other ones. Fortune's Run is one that definitely stuck out to me. It is a boomer shooter. Uh, it... Um, you know, it's trying to be inspired by Doom and Quake and, and Duke Nukem and all these other things, and it's uh, very aggressive about being... Uh, a first-person shooter that looks like it's from the 90s to the point where it's like you go to interact with the button and the, the camera zooms in real quick on your hand and your hand like presses the button really hard and then it zooms back into the first-person perspective really hard it, it's just uh it, it's really going for it and it looks great and it's got a, a really great attitude um uh you know you go to like a club scene and a bunch of the sprites are doing their dancing animation loops and it looks really good and uh, I'm just I'm I'm really into these kinds of games right now, and this is this seems like a very good one of those. 
Uh, it's got like full voice acting though, so it's like it's not trying to be so slavish to uh, like the, that like oh we are just like Doom. It's like no, we're inspired by it and we look a lot like it, but we're gonna do a lot more with the stuff than you could have done back then. And I think that's uh, probably the right way to do these things. I know there's a lot of these now, but I'm I'm not over it. Uh, I know that I'm sure some people are kind of like okay, I get it. Let's move on. Um, I'm kind of happy to still get a handful uh, and like pick and choose which ones I'm going to get into. And so far, this one's been pretty impressive. You play that, uh, was it Warhammer uh, bolt gun? I have it downloaded. I haven't touched it yet, but I I've think heard I'm, good things about it. I've heard good things as well. Yes. Yeah. I, I just uh, I like uh, pixels and sprites uh, moving around and blowing up real good. And <laughs> you the game played Proteus? Just, uh, yes, I love Proteus. Proteus yeah. was a very good Hell one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right, so and the, the, like Proteus is like uh, on the spectrum of these kinds of games where it's like that one is just really going for the goopy, explosive, pixelation stuff that I like. Uh, this game has a lot of that as well, but it's also it seems like it's doing a lot of other things. And uh, the, there's a, a lot of characters and some, some even some like cutscenes and stuff. And the cutscenes kind of look like they are out of Rebel Assault, not the oh. FMV one, the second one, but like the first one. And um, just I like everything that it's going for. They're they're really they they have a lot of good ideas about how to pull on those nostalgic strings. And I'm, I'm liking it a lot. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Grub, what else did you check out so far in the Steam Next so, Fest? So yeah, I, I'll go through the rest of these. Uh, Jusant, or Jusant, uh, Jusant. That climbing, the climbing game we saw from the Xbox thing. Uh, it is very good. I This really? is the other one that really stuck out to me. It is all about climbing, uh, but the physics feel really great. Uh, there's these sequences where yeah, you, 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 you play by holding down on each trigger alternatively to oh, okay. grip and so, pull yourself like up. Grow up? Yes, yeah, so I guess yeah, yeah, I, 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 uh, I played Grow Home, but I don't remember it at all. And people are saying this, that's how that worked, in that it was very similar. This was the vertical strand game, right? Yes. Yes, yes exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yes, all okay, climbing, that did look pretty good. It's yeah. kind of got a, an eco, uh, ICO, uh, um, like visual style almost, kind of. Um, but it's like everything just feels so good. It feels so good to climb. And then you are going to, you know, put in your platoons or put pittons. I don't know how to say the word when you're climbing to like platoons. screw in the wall. Uh, and then you uh, can hang from that and like swing to like a, a, a grip, a grip that's like way on the other side of a cliff. And that feels amazing. I was really, really into this when I was playing it last night. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I like a good, a game that just like has a good mechanic focuses on it and then like figures out all the ways that they can have fun with that. Yeah. And that's definitely one of those. Uh, I also played Ebenezer and the Invisible World, which uh -huh. is How's that? that that is pretty good too. It, it's uh, they so this is the Ebenezer Scrooge uh, Christmas Carol uh, Castlevania or you know uh, Metroidvania oh, sort of what? game that they made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it looks yes. sick. Oh yeah, we did. We, look, we looked at this song when we did our trailer roundup on Friday, oh, Jan. Nice. And this one was uh, definitely a lot of us were into it. They are clearly like we have this lore, this you know this D Dickensian lore that we have, so we're gonna use it. So there's a lot of times where you know the game stops to have these characters talk to one another, and I'm like that. I think that's fair. That makes sense because obviously that's the joke is hey we are gonna take this Christmas Carol stuff very seriously, and it's um it actually takes place a year the the Christmas after the, the events of the book. So Ebenezer Scrooge is like now a good guy and he's here to protect um, like the, the downtrodden. And like one of the first things you do is like run into support a bunch of uh, union workers that are striking. It's like, yeah, the good Ebenezer Scrooge is here to help. Um, but in the combat, if it, it feels very much like a symphony of the night, cool. you, you have your basic attack. You can, of course, because you're Ebenezer Scrooge, call in ghosts to do other like your heavy attacks. And you can choose like swap between them depending on what attack you want to do. Uh, there's a back dash. Uh, it all looks really cool. And of course, uh, uh, Scrooge is dressed exactly like Scrooge McDuck. Uh, they're like, it's, he's got the blue coat and the, uh, uh, the, the, he's, uh, the scarf, the he's red Disney scarf and edging, right? Yes, it, he's Disney edging. It's exactly right. <laughs> uh, he even has the uh, bounce on enemies with like the cane. Um, but instead of a cane, it's a ghost boy that you bounce on. It's a whole thing. Wait, uh, is it uh, Tiny Tim? Scrooge Does he McDuck? Sem Was Scrooge uh, McDuck a direct play on Ebenezer Scrooge? I want just, to think about you, it. No, I love DuckTales, but they never did the ghost shit. Like, so was it? Yeah, but it, but Dan, just say what the sentence you said again out loud. <laughs> but Scrooge is a word, dude. There's a Bill Murray movie called Scrooge. Well, that is which is Scrooge. based that's on Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge. That is, that's a bad it's example. A Christmas Carol. That's a bad example. But, yes, very bad. But no, they're just it's using the, the other example. But that's DuckTales, what it is. What? What? What other one? <laughs> There's only one no. Scrooge, Dan. But no, do, but did that exist as a word before Ebenezer Scrooge? Like the idea of like Scrooge, like a like you know. No, 
I don't greedy. think so. So Scrooge McDuck was a direct... You think if the Christmas Carol thing didn't happen, Scrooge McDuck isn't named that? Y- yes. Right. I think he's just greedy McDuck at that point. Yes. And like, yeah, he's at, just like Ebenezer total Scrooge dick like, McDuck. He's yeah. like the go-to name for someone who's greedy in, in uh, literature. Uh, yes. Uh, it was yes, that name after that. Okay. It was that influential. Yes, Charles Dickens is that influential. Christmas. The Metal Gear yes. of our time. Christmas, big influence. Uh, anyway, that, that game's looking promising. Uh, I think that they nailed the Symphony of the Night parts, which is really what I was worried about, and it seems like a lot of fun. Uh, two others, I played Laika, which is the Trials Blood Dragon game where you play as a fox and you have a gun and basically, oh, those, like some of the mechanics, you can block bullets that come at you with the bottom of your motorcycle. So if someone's shooting at you, you turn the bottom of your motorcycle towards them to block it. Uh, you, you have a gun and you could fire twice before you run out of ammo. But if you do a backflip, it reloads. You can also do your like quick turnaround. And if you time that, you can uh, deflect a bullet back at the enemy. But you can only do that once unless you do a front flip and then it reloads that. And so it's like, trying to, to uh, you know, marry the, the trials motorcycle mechanics with the combat system, and it works pretty well. It's got, like, um, a cute art style. You play as this mother fox and, you know, or, or some, some other canine-type creature. I'm not sure if it's exactly a fox. Uh, but she has a puppy, and the puppy is at home, and things go really bad, and it's kind of gruesome where, like, this other fox gets hung up by its entrails. Okay. So it's like it's going... Yeah, it's got, like, a whole tone it's going for. Uh, and yet it's still, I mean, saying that out loud, it sounds really messed up and it is, but like they kind of pull it off because they're walking a fine line with the art style. But you're, it's definitely like, oh, this mom is like worried about like her her child seeing all this stuff. But she also has to be out here dealing with the uh, uh, this this crumbling world. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's pretty well done. I thought that the trials combat mechanic stuff is actually pretty, a pretty fertile ground for some fun stuff. Um, nice. That. The last one is the the Invincible, uh, which is a walking simulator of sorts uh, that takes place on what I think is Mars, and you are like going through the world and seeing very cool uh, uh, like space stuff. Uh, but I, I kind of hard had a hard time getting into that one uh, because I would get a little bit lost and I would get frustrated. And I'm not sure if that game's going to be for me. I'll say that it looks really cool though, um, in terms of like the the, the technology that they use. Uh, in the world in that game where it's like, oh, here's your radar, and it's a bunch of, like, analog lights, and they, like, light up as they're going around. It's like that sort of thing, and I like that stuff. I just don't know if this is exactly my type of game. I'd probably have to get a little bit more time with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something that is extremely up my alley that is also part of Steam Next Fest is a game called Solvars. Um, Turn-based card game with a party. Uh, Extremely up my alley. Uh, more to come on that soon, but if you are a fan of, like, fast-paced, turn-based action, which sounds odd, uh, with a unique story popping off in the background, pretty much if you like a JRPG, this may be up your alley as well. The art style is interesting. I just like that the trailer for it begins with Burn Your Soul, uh, which I'm Hell always yeah. willing to do. Yeah, it works yeah, for me. Go. That's easy. Yeah, I'll light it up. Every day. Uh, Hell gentlemen, yeah. anything else? else from steam next fest summer game fest before we get to i guess let's just call it demo of the week sure yeah uh i i I mean i played a little bit of viewfinder as well uh that's one that's that one where it's like oh you can take a picture of the world then you hold up the picture and then you like staple it to the world and then you can walk into the to that picture uh and it's like as cool as that sounds the game is even cooler so uh i don't know mostly i'm just like oh there's so many things in this uh, this steam next fest the next fest that i'm actually interested in and then a couple of the ones I just downloaded on a whim have been the most exciting. So nice. this is a very cool thing. I'm glad that Steam does this. I'm glad so many developers yeah. have stuff to show off. Uh, there's other things I want to check out. Uh, Jump Light Odyssey. I played like five minutes of that. Lies of P. Everyone seems to be really into what that's putting yeah, down. Yeah, I've been playing that. Yeah. So uh, what, Tell me about the lies. That? Tell me about the P. So, so, yeah, you know, name doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but no. uh, the game is very much well it's just bloodborne uh it's bloodborne with like carnival steampunk puppets and um that's cool i'm into that uh it's funny because like it is it i haven't played bloodborne since it came out and this game is just like so it's, it's very much the same game i remember but it's great uh i really i really enjoy it and i've also hit the point where i hit in bloodborne where i'm like 
this could be it for me. I've already <laughs> done it in the demo, but no, it's really good. Um, and I, I know I just need to, you know, forget my other bullshit. The same bullshit I was able to like let go of an Elden Ring. I have to do for this game, uh, because it is a from adjacent sort of uh, Soulsborne thing. So, uh, but I, I really dig it. I, um, I was talking to Tam about it, and he was worried that. Like, can they can they keep the momentum of this thing going after right. the demo? I mean, you know, um, Tam. Tam's like very particular about his Soulsborne stuff. Yeah. And when a game like gets close but not doesn't quite get all the way, uh, he's he's like quick to call it out. And I think that's I'm always that's why I'm always interested to hear from him when he plays one of these. So we'll see when Lies of P gets here. It's not that far off, right? It's coming out in a couple of months or something yeah, like that. I believe yeah. it's pretty soon. But like the polish on it, the 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 feel of it and like control wise, like everything seems really kind of spot on. Like I am very impressed with how this game looks and plays out of the gate. And I do think it just, there's something about the, the same thing that what Bloodborne did for me, where it was just sort of like, Hey, what if like slash from guns and roses was just like a decrepit ghoul monster. And that's what you play, you know, like sort of that too. Um, and I love just, I mean, who doesn't love, like, fucked up puppets, man? Like, come on. Right. Uh, Whiskey know? Samurai says it's not a Soulsborne, it's a Blood Nokio. I okay. mean, totally. I, I, without okay. a doubt. Okay, I have a question, and I don't know if you can answer this, uh, Jeff, but is this, is this post the Pinocchio story? Is he already a boy now, or can he grow, like, a wood nose and use that as a weapon at any point? I'll be... Totally honest with you. Uh, there, I want to say there's like a Geppetto like reference. Okay. okay. I don't know this. Like, who can? I can't follow the story in these things. Like, I, I sort of get it. Like, the currency is this ergo thing. Like, I don't, I don't know what's <laughs> sure. happening, man. Are there donkey boys know. in this? There's donkey boys. Yes. Oh, that sounds messed up. Wait, is there a Jiminy Cricket like? No, there's not. Unless I haven't gotten there yet. But there are donkey donkey men. Uh, sure. Don donkey men or donkey boys sounds like a character from Hey Dude. Uh, they say people are saying yes, Jiminy is your guide, but what? Gemini that... cricket. Am I thinking donkey lips? I'm thinking donkey, donkey lips from I'm Salute Your Don Shorts. Yes, Salute yeah. Your Shorts. That's it. Thank yes. you. Yes. We. Oh, okay. Yeah, donkey. Bud Nick. Yeah. Yes, there it is. Ugh, the whole deal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ugh, R.I.P. Apparently, apparently. All right. Bud Nick knows John uh, Connor. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's Everybody's. right. Totally. They commit crimes together. Uh huh. Like. All I extracted out of this thing was like, this is Pinocchio Bloodborne. And then that's where, you know, I had a very Dan surface level sort of I, thing. I, to be honest, oh, sorry, I think that's here, exactly Dan. what they want you to, to say when you're playing that game. It's just yeah. shout those words. Uh, it. Pinocchio Bloodborne, Pinocchio okay, Bloodborne. Okay, we get it. Jiminy's the guide. I don't know. Like, I don't feel that doesn't come across in any sort of like over the top way. So I, I'm, I'm not perceptive to that. Plus, I've been stoned every time I'm playing this game. Relax. Yeah, of course. Totally. Pinocchio's I mean, real hot right now, flag. right? They had like the two movies last year and now yeah, this is game. Is it always hot? Like, that's what I'm wondering. Because there's been like a Pinocchio thing every year of my life, it feels like. Didn't, um, uh, there was one with the, the the Oscars guy who climbed on the back of the seats. Roberto Benini, he played Pinocchio, yeah, right? Exactly. There's yeah, exactly. One yeah. where Pauly Shore plays Pinocchio. Really? Is there? Yeah. So he does the voice. It's a 3D movie. And uh, Wait. Uh, you got if you haven't seen this trailer, I know Dan. If, if the second's on Prime Video, we're doing a watch party. Oh um, no! It is uh, <laughs> the one thing I remember from it is the, there's a cat talking to the to Pinocchio and goes, oh no, a talking puppet. And then he shoots it with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh, and I'm desperate to see that movie. So we'll, we'll I see. I just, I almost, now that I, everyone is so like horny for Pinocchio, I kind of wish Pinocchio was not involved in Lies of P at all. I wish it was a completely different. Well, whose who's lie would it be then? If not I know, Pinocchio. It's just, like, it's just it's, I don't know if you, I don't know. Did anyone see the um, Guillermo del Toro one? I liked it, but I, I'm a I'm a mark for Guillermo del Toro most things. So am I. You did not, Grub? I've I've not. I want to. I oh, love I love you Guillermo seen it. stuff. Yeah, I've yeah. not seen it though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That man speaking about fucked up puppets loves a good fucked up puppet. Oh, yeah. I didn't see his stuff Rim. more. I think the only one I've seen is Pacific Rim. Pan's Labyrinth. Was, no, he, I never saw it. You want to talk Labyrinth. about variety? That guy's got variety. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to see more of If you haven't seen that, that movie's... I haven't seen the one where she fucks a fish. 
I need to see she, that. What is That's the, all uh, lady? of them. Yeah. What is it? Uh, lady of the of Lake, the lady Way of, of Water. Fish. Shape of Water. It's Shape Bioshock. Water. Like, I always said they could use that set and just make a Bioshock movie. Oh, Michael sure. Shannon is really good in that movie. He is. Michael man. Shannon's really good, period. Ah, that's also true. Who's, who's got a good Michael Shannon up their sleeve? Let's no. hear it. Where's Never he from? Tried. He's from Chicago. Can I get a quick, so. quick grub update on 24? Uh, I finished the first season. Uh, Pretty good, he, huh? He, was he, uh, it? He was that it? Was that it? No. What? Oh! It was it! Yes, Jen! Yes! Wait, what? We did it! Write it down! Everyone's gonna be confused! Everyone's gonna be confused! I'll just write it down! Everyone that write down it. 24! Yeah. Everyone okay, write down 24! So Explain it! We can't! Oh we can't! God, so Between happy. season 2 and 3! Okay! We but got we were, there! We've been trying to remember oh, did it. A, a game that we brought up, and we were like, we'll do something with that, and we that talked Grub about needs it for to like... Play. Yes. And it's yeah. going to be when he finishes season two. So canonically, it's right in line. Okay, great. So, yeah. okay. And we talked about it like maybe an entire day because oh, it was like right. it was kept coming up over and over. To and the we're point right. where we're like, oh, we're going to remember this. We were and right. Then, exactly. Exactly. Oh, my and then we God. none of us remember. <laughs> okay. And, and, oh, and, man. and this conversation apparently happened without me there, but I still thought I remembered. And now <laughs> yeah. that I hear it, I still don't know. Yeah, I still yeah, don't know if I was there for that. Do you now understand the suffering of Jack Bauer, Grub? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, let that you know, bitch suffer. I, I was no, saying, yes, hero. They, they, uh, <laughs> did, they did all the stuff that was like the most shocking. Like, it's like yeah. they set everything up like they wouldn't do that, and then they do it. And it's like, that's what the show some, keeps doing. And it's great for it. It doesn't. Uh, it's a show that has nothing to say, and I would be upset if it did. It <laughs> Literally should not try exactly. to say <laughs> And exactly. a horrific the back waste of, of Dennis Hopper. Oh my god, poor Dennis Hopper. R.I.P. It was Fucking. funny to uh, be like, uh, I've never heard anyone mention Dennis Hopper in the no. show, and then he like he's, does his accent. And you're like, oh, that's why everyone's kind he's of the main for guy. Him. Season one. Can I just spoil the end of season one? I just want to ask my yeah, only memory. Go. It's been like Please. 20 years since I saw it. Grub, if I remember, he just drives a van up to a dock and kills like 15 <laughs> people. Yeah, is that like uh, Dennis Hopper? Or Dennis Hopper's talking to his, his son in the show or whatever, and it's so like, what if he doesn't come? And he's like, I think he will. And then. Not even a beat. They don't do a beat. It's just van drives through a wall, and I I cackled. I was like really <laughs> laughing really hard. He just hops out and then lets it roll, and then he just kills everyone and shoots everyone. It's very well, good. Back and then, then Nina, that's all Nina you kills needed. his wife, right? Yes, Nina kills his wife. That was and it was like she was pregnant. So I'm like, well, yeah. they're not gonna kill the pregnant I woman. Forgot about that. Jesus. Dude, it was 2001. That's all you needed to do. Yeah, but it's like the show started like right before 9/11, so they were like primed and ready to go even before that. So it's like they 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 lean into it hard, clearly. But uh, oh, like yeah. they the only thing that show had going for it was literally a clock. Like that yeah. is oh, it. Don't That's downplay the only Kiefer. Thing that show don't had. you downplay Kiefer. Backlar, were oh. you a burn notice guy? Because I feel like you might have been a burn notice no, guy. No, I didn't watch that shit. <laughs> oh, all right, fine. Oh, okay, okay. Man, I'm, not, I'm not a you know, when you're a spy. Watched. All right, all right, cool. Not, I, I never watched Burn Notice, but. Fucking twenty four pissed me off, man. Oh come on now. Okay, so, uh, well, I'm glad we we got there. We figured out. What, yes, what and we'll keep doing twenty four updates because that will lead into after I get done with the second season. That's when the, the the game takes place at that point, and we're gonna do some we're gonna do something fun with that game. So okay, so the update is he broke the seal. He's now just killing, just berserk mode. Uh, yes. His wife is dead. Uh, his unborn baby's dead, and Dennis Hopper's yes. dead. Okay, exactly. Yep. All that's right. it. That's the update. Okay, we got there. I don't even remember the game. Yeah, that there's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right, I'm excited. A, a quick thing I checked out uh, with Emma was uh, Thirsty Suitors. Thirsty Suitors, uh, really good, really great. Um, there's uh, skateboarding in it, and it did its thing with skateboarding. I've never seen it any skateboarding game. That isn't the main crux of this. It's like a turn-based romance game, kind of. Uh, uh, but... When you get to like a power line, instead of grinding on the power line, you use your skateboard as like a little zip line doodad thing. That was pretty That's cool. cool. Anyway, That's cool. Last calls. Looks very good. Last calls for any other miscellaneous bits and bobs or feelings before we get to the demo of the week. Yeah, just what, where, what's everyone's status on Zelda? Uh, I am. I got back into it after not playing it for the entire check. trip. Name. Uh, and I'm like, oh, this game still is incredible. Uh, it was yep. so much, it was so easy to get back into it. I immediately started doing a bunch of stuff. And I'll say, okay, here's the thing I really like about this game is Wait, okay. I am not someone who's like following all the quest lines, like to a T where it's like, oh, I get a quest. I'm going to go through it 
step by step. What I do is I'm going to start just looking around. I played with the, with the HUD off a lot. So I was just looking around to what oh. was interesting. Mm -hmm. And I was 60 hours into this game and I had it unlocked to like the, um, the, the uh, uh, shrine sensor or whatever. I was aware oh. that I could go get it. But, but what I did is, like, okay, I actually want to make that happen now. So I went to the person I needed to talk to. And it was like one thing after another. It's like, okay, you need to do this. It's like, I already yeah. did that. You need to do this. I've already done that. And it's like, I'm Let just naturally stumbling across these important things because I am going to stuff that looks interesting. And it turns out the game's designed to work that way as well. And it just rules. It's just such a fun game to play. Were you having trouble getting that guy to the place he needs to be? Whoa, like, whoa, whoa. He keeps telling you to do stuff. Uh, I, I I talked to him a bunch of times and I was kind of like half paying attention to what he was saying. So I, I guess, yes, kind of a little bit. Okay. And then I like, what happened to me. And then I read and I'm like, oh, and I went to talk to the other person and it was like one thing after another I had already done. And it was like, then, then it all it uh, worked out after that. I've been I, watching. Oh, go ahead, Backler. I was going to say, I know I'm so far behind the group's progress. You know, I am playing it with Dylan. Um, the reveal we we just got we're we're in the wind temple now and sure. mm -hmm. like the path to it and the reveal Ooh. of it like pretty oh good. my path, god the path yes. to it is pretty substantial oh, oh yeah. my god and it's awesome like yeah. i i'm just so it's it, it's on i cannot really put it into words i have not felt this way about a game in such a long time nope. I'm 70 well, hours in, and I, I had to take like a week or so break with everything going on. And I, I played a bunch over the weekend, and I was like, "Oh, right!" And I was feeling that magic again, even like 70 hours in and discovering yeah. things I didn't know were in there, and like huge, expansive side adventures and stuff like that. And yeah, I'm I'm just completely in awe. Doesn't make still sense. Of this it game. doesn't make sense. I feel yeah, like it doesn't have, make sense I, how big it is. I have so many hearts. I have so many batteries now. I still don't have any good weapons, and everything is still killing me hella fast. But I've <laughs> yeah, really? never felt more alive. <laughs> so that's where that I'm like I need to upgrade my armor is the, the mm, key. So I'm, I'm starting to do a, a, the 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 uh, missions to get yes. the great fairies to be like, hey, we're cool, we're not freaking out anymore, and that's prioritize for that. One, I... Yeah, yes, yeah, prioritize. That's also just a fun thing to do because you're just doing cool things. You're finding cool people to talk to. Uh, the little sequences that you see when you do that are really cute and cool. Uh, and then it's like all these resources that you've been gathering, maybe you've been using them for other things. You need to learn which ones you need to be hanging on yeah, to. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm so. worried about. Like, I'm worried yes. that, like, I'm squandering the stuff that I need to make my, to uh, improve my battery. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I still oh, no, have that, one cell. That stuff, the Zonite stuff is usually pretty straightforward. Like, I just yeah. use that to buy the stuff underground, and right. then you go to one of the, the forge places or whatever, and you get the battery. Like, I don't yes. ever buy the ones that, like, recharge your batteries. I only sure, sure, do sure. the upgrade stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I need to be more responsible with that stuff because, uh, but I do, I, I also think, like, I'm going to be in a rupee situation soon where I'm just like... Man, I got to There's a real more. economy in the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it works. Out. I think it yeah. mostly works. Like, the oh, things agreed. that I find the great fairies mainly need are, like, whenever you find, like, oh, here's these weird crickets or these frogs or these very specific things that you don't see everywhere. Like, it's not going to be, like, oh, I need a bunch of flint and I don't have flint. It's not the, yeah. like, right. amber yeah, or the stuff that you see everywhere. Right. Yeah. And it's, like, oh, it's a thing that might run away when I see it. So now I have to actually, like, stop and sneak and pick it up and then... It's good. Uh, Virtual GM has a question. Has anyone gotten the Master Sword? I have not. I've no. had it spoiled for me how to get it. Ooh, okay, I so you not. Let's keep that. But I, I, what I, I want to say, it was uh, as I was that, scrolling through TikTok, no. and it, I saw it happen because my, my <gasps> algorithm is just littered yeah, with Tears of the Kingdom stuff now. That's you so like terrible. one thing. But it was fine because I was as I was witness, witness, witnessing it, my mouth just dropped. Oof. Um, oh, wow. and, I, and I couldn't okay. be more excited, you know, I, uh, I got a pretty good idea of where it is. The, uh, actual mechanics of doing it though are still, uh, confusing to me. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. So yep. cool. Uh, yeah, I just I'm did a like, long I'm side adventure. For a year. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I, me yeah. too. It's like, I, I, I am going to probably try to get credits here pretty soon. Uh, Sean, but it's one that I'm going to keep poking away at, uh, for the rest of the year. Cause I'm just enjoying it so, so, so much. And then. You know, maybe that means until Starfield, really, but Starfield's not till September, so that's a good, you know, two oh, and a half. It's not enough time. It's not that long. It's not that long, but I'll yeah, definitely okay, never mind. still be playing this. Like, yeah. I'll, I, I know for sure we'll be playing this well into... Uh, those uh, those streams you do with Dylan are fun, Bacalar. That's, uh, that's a good way to play that game, I think. It's, it's just, you know, how... Uh, You'll never finish, Lying though. to my kid to oh, get no way. time together. Yeah. No, we're yeah. playing it off stream, too, for sure. We're uh, not okay. just doing it. Either way, I still feel like there's so much. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. 
Now you guys are at the Wind Temple. Maybe you'll get, get some momentum going out of there, especially since you get some cool stuff in there. So, yes, yeah. a very helpful thing from the Wind Temple. Yep. Cool. Yep. Um, God, yeah, I think it's I think it's my favorite game of all time. I think yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, in I that conversation for sure. Really it's, can see that. Yep. Yeah, it's extremely in that conversation. I mean, like I've, I've frequently said Breath of the Wild is right up there for me. And like, I can't imagine saying that Breath of the Wild is better than this. You know, like this is everything that was and a lot more. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think yeah. Breath of the Wild like fits with me uh, a little bit better, but it's like clearly this is the more robust and well thought out game. Yeah, I've yeah. you know I've seen people complain that they miss some of the powers from Breath of the Wild, but yeah. people have definitely come up with ways to get past that and just make their own versions of those powers. Uh, I think these yeah. are way better. These powers, oh, yeah. they're fun. Like I just love the fact that like you know playing it with him too, he like will just have two different ideas of how to do a thing. That's great. And like one of us has like a better way to do it. Like where but they both know, work. They're both totally valid. I'm sure. Right. But like even half the time, it's pretty much split where he has like the better idea straight up. He's like, no, make a long ass stick, reach through the cage and get the thing that, and you're like, Oh, of course. Why was I going to go around? <laughs> oh, wow. it's, it's just fucking that, awesome, man. That's so fucking that, good. That's Spoiled honestly, little that shit. to me, that is, what makes it such a good Zelda game. Like there was that yeah. conversation with breath of the wild. Like, Oh, is this really Zelda? It's like Zelda was always like, here's some tools. And now you get to have all these revelations about how to use these tools, but usually it's in a dungeon and it's pretty narrow, the possibility space, what you can do with those tools. And here it's like, here are some tools that you can pretty much do anything with and now have those revelations over and over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And uh, to hear that it's like Dylan can just have a very simple idea that he expects to work. And then it does work. That is Amazing. so magical. Like most yeah. games could never really even approach that. It's magic. Yeah, the, the specific feeling you get with this game, I don't think I've ever felt with like any other game to this level, you know? Yep. Yep. It's, I it's insane. really, really, really adore it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to see some insane stuff on Tears of the Kingdom, I highly suggest you check out Max Blumenthal from GameSpot, uh, video producer over there. He is an absolute wizard with uh, Tears of the Kingdom and some of the shit he does slash makes. I, were we playing the same game? Because um, he absolutely... I saw one where he absolutely devastated a Lionel and he barely touched the ground. Um, it was great. It was insane. I'm 70 hours in. I haven't seen a Lionel. <laughs> this game is fucking huge. I, I spent like two hours trying to beat one and barely got through it when I finally did after it destroyed me probably a dozen times. He did it in two minutes. Yep. What? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, last game to talk about is still another demo, but it's also a game that's coming out very soon. Uh, uh, Grub. Oh, sorry. Grub, I think you and I are the only ones that checked out this demo, but I can back you up here, big dog. The demo of the week. Final Fantasy. 16. Too much echo. Too much. Some, some reverb. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm, I, listen, Yo, I'm not a huge Final Grub, Fantasy guy, but I'm, in, I'm into it. I think I said on Game S Mornings, we talked about Final Fantasy 16 and how I was feeling yes. on it. And I said, the th it looks so fucking boring. I am not about it. I don't care at all. And I am so happy that I'm dead wrong. I'm all yep. aboard the Clive train, baby. Me and yep. Torgal, we're best friends now. Sorry me the fuck up. It's, uh, yes. I, I, what is it about it? Because it's, I think it's to the characters really are hitting with me. The, uh, uh, like finding out like what's going on with the big conflict of this revenge story and Clive wanting to like find this fire dominant, uh, which is just like a, a, a person that can summon uh, Ifrit or however you say it. And so wait, I, I, I saw that s sequence. I think I know what happened, but he thinks something else happened. Like, wh wh where is this going to lead? Is this going to be a big revelation for him that I already think I understand, or maybe I'm wrong? Uh, so it's like I, there's enough thing threads that I'm happy to be pulling on, and uh, I, that's not necessarily where I'm usually at with games like this. Mm -mm. Um, I, it, I and so I, is it just, is it really just the prestige? TV Game of Thrones stuff that they're going for that is actually working on me because that would be pretty pretty fucked up for me. I'm like, <laughs> like, am I that easy of a mark? And I think maybe the answer in this case is yes. Uh, I'll say that um, this game is one thousand percent trying to be God of War. Like, yes, yes. the combat is Devil May Cry, I, absolutely, yeah, yeah. and the and the tone is Game of Thrones for sure. It is trying to be God of War, and I feel a little bit sorry for Square Enix because God of War is a big very expensive game and it looks very expensive in every single frame that they render 
And I think that Square Enix did their best to emulate that and they got really close, but it's not quite as expensive looking as as God of War. I'll say that maybe that's an issue. I'll say for me, it really hasn't been because when it does come up short, it just ends up looking kind of like a video game and, and it owns that stuff still. It's like, no, this is still one of those RPGs you played on an 8-bit system forever ago uh, uh, underneath everything. And we're not, we're not we're not like ashamed of that. We are still that. And so it's still really working for me. I've been very into it. I'm uh, and uh, impressed by what they've given so far. Yeah, I think they shouldn't have shied away from the Game of Thrones comparison. And I feel like the trailers leading up to Final Fantasy 16 uh, haven't really done it proper justice because I was just bored out of my mind. And I kind of like Game of Thrones. I'm completely fine with it. Uh, but it's, there's something about the facial capture or facial animation that they do here that's particularly striking. I guess I, I felt the same way how I felt with like Final Fantasy VII Remake, where it's like, wow, that cloud looks hella good. Here, Clive's like, damn, okay, I believe you, kid. Let's go. I'll let I'll let you cook. Let's let's do this. <laughs> um, but like, it's I think it's a combination of that the story is actually fairly interesting, and I think I have to remind myself that I do like the Final Fantasies without the zippers and the buckles and the big swords. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Uh, and that I did like Final Fantasy XII, and then I do, really do like Tactics Advance and regular Tactics. So this stuff with crystals and everything, are like, okay, like medieval shit. I, I could get down with this. Um, and just like the combat just feels very, very, very tight, very good. Yeah, I was scared really that it would replicate too much of Strangers of Paradise, which... The combat in it was completely fine. It just felt a little too... It felt like there was too much gravity in it, and I don't know if that quite makes sense. It felt too heavy versus this, where you are much more light on your feet and you can zip around uh, more than you you could in um, even Final Fantasy XV, I want to say. I thought I wouldn't like the uh, the lack of a party, but I feel like Clive is... And this is just me still fawning over how cool Ben Starr is, but I feel like the the writing of Clive so far in the demo, it's like, okay, all right. Like, you're not, you're you're good. You're cool. Uh, yes. I, I can get down with this. I like where we're going. I like where uh, everything is leading. And Grub, I know you said that it didn't look as expensive as a God of War, but I feel like during the, the last sequence in the demo, I don't want to spoil folks who haven't checked out the demo yet, it's particularly striking, and it's like, all right, I think yes. this is where you... These sequences, this is where Square put all of their money in. Because, Agreed. like, this, I could watch, I don't want to say a movie, but uh, in comparison to Diablo 4, I could watch a 10 minute cutscene dedicated to this over uh, a blood demon mommy uh, and Lilith. <laughs> yes. I could still I, watch I'm, that too, though. I, I think you're right. They, they, they pick their battles. And I think there's, um, like that that facial animation during the, those cinematics is always very good. It is like when it stops and it's like, okay, now we're going to um, have you go, well, you know, walk around and pick some missions or whatever, you know, what little they've done in that in the demo. It's like there, it's like, okay, they're not going to try to make it look as good as the cutscenes when it's just like, oh, a, a quick little dialogue burst uh, that you're going to do. And the, that's, again, it's fine. It's, it's not actually a problem. It's just like you can tell that they had to pick and choose their battles. Uh, but yeah, when it's, when they did, when they do spend their money, it is clear on screen and it does look better than just about anything. And yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you where it's like the, the characters really are pushing it. I think Clive is pretty interesting. He's not some, uh, he's not like a total edgelord, but he's definitely, uh, he still is like, oh, brooding. And uh, um, it's, but it's interesting whenever they let sort of like his humanity come through. And I'm like, okay, this is really attaching me to the character. So uh, they, they also said like, oh, you know, it's a revenge story. So we can't stop and be goofy. They're still like, uh, one of the, you know, first things you can do is, um, well, it, 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 I, you know, I won't get into specifics, but it, there's definitely stuff where it's like, no, you can have these little side diversions that don't feel like something that someone who's in the middle of his revenge fantasy is going to do. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm hopeful that they have enough levity in there to have a bit of a roller coaster of emotions for people who don't just want to have nonstop guy thinking about killing someone else for this like 30 hour game or however long it is. Yeah, uh, the. <laughs> Two other things about Final Fantasy 16, the demo. Uh, I, I do like how prominently it seems like Sid is. I'm a big mark for Sid being heavily used in a Final Fantasy game. Uh, and also, I just love in, in a serious RPG like this where people just cuss. 
out of nowhere, just out of frustration. It's like, fuck, yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, it's something else. It's like, else. all right, yes. cool, cool. Uh, also, uh, uh, yes, yeah, Adolphus, uh, who uh, is voiced by, was it Ralph Ennis? Uh, his, his voice is incredible. Uh, oh, it's my God. really amazing. He sounds like a tree. Yeah, exactly. Sounds like he's into entities. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Ralph Ennison? In Einson, Einson, yeah. uh, something like that. I can't remember. But uh, originally from great. the UK office. Uh, also, also yeah. really great. Um, yes. Oh man, yeah. Sid's really cool in that game. Sid's really sick uh -huh. in that game. Uh, all right, gentlemen. And anyway, we'll probably take a longer look or a quick look at uh, Final Fantasy 16 later this week. We'll see. Uh, I am excited uh, to to check out more of that game. Also, they should have just. Me too. I think they should have lent leaned all the way into the 2000s and just uh, made like a butt rock new metal trailer with all the Final Fantasy stuff. Just like play some Limp Biscuit over it and then we'll be good. Yes. That, uh, please give it to me. Yes. Yes. You want that, huh? You want I want Limp Biscuit. that. Okay. I want that. <laughs> okay. All right, boys. Well, let's go take a quick break, break and we'll be back with some news after this quick break. See you in a bit. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's up, y'all? I know what it's like to want to try and help everyone in your life, whether it's family, your significant other, your pets, your work. You want to make sure you can help everyone out. But when's the last time you decided to help yourself? Therapy can give you the tools to make sure that you're living a more balanced life and able to help everyone, especially yourself. Listen, homies, I've gained a lot from seeking therapy. It has really helped me contextualize and put into place a lot of aspects of my life. It's also helped me gain the tools to handle stressful situations, and it is also great to get any emotions that I've been holding onto off of my chest to someone else. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient to your schedule. Fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll get matched with a licensed therapist. You can also switch therapists at any time. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BombCast today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash BombCast. I, I, I quickly learned that I haven't worn shorts in maybe like a year plus because when I went camping, I was wearing some... All right, we see some thigh. We see some thigh. Okay, Dan, maybe we sit. I don't... I don't... No. Okay. What, shorts are we, illegal? Are we, doing are we doing this now? Are we just showing off? You some got a problem thighs? with shorts? Everyone, show the shorts. shorts Get up there. Thighs, you know. I'm not. I'm not ready for these. These <laughs> just hurt. not happening. Damn it! I hurt myself. <laughs> oh, you gave yourself like a what do they call it? A, a, a five star? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. My uh, thighs aren't white enough, Christian. How dare you? I, I hate to disappoint people, but my thighs are as milky white as everyone else's on this uh, <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> I, there's no way that's true like no. dog so like that you, part of me does I, not see the sun yeah i mean if you want to like, see a camera yo, break like on what, stream, what is it who am i anyway yeah that's, that's pretty wild oh my god Jan. <laughs> oh crap okay thank you M mg310 for uh reminding me that i need to get this kino figure i i i need this kino figure i love ernie Rice jr uh, Jeff Grubb, you've got some news, and I'd like for you to talk about the news, starting with this first story on the dock. I've got news, starting with this first story on the dock, which is Nintendo Direct tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. It's These happening. Fuckers. These fuckers. Nintendo's confirmed that they hate Jan, and they want them to wake up and get to work and talk over some Nintendo announcements. It's going to be 40 minutes long. Uh, I think that's a pretty substantial Direct Seems like a general, it seems like a big boy. Uh, I am going to get my hopes up a tad because I think that they could have some fun stuff. One thing I will warn people against is there ain't, there's almost no way hardware is going to be at this thing. Uh, I would, I would, would not expect a lot of that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that, yeah or, or it could pop up out of nowhere like they did with like the Switch where it's like, here's just the, uh, uh, yeah, like teaser trailer for hardware out of nowhere and then join us again 
in a month when we really don't talk about it. It could be that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, but they telegraphed it big time when it was like, hey, we actually have stuff to show you about the Switch. Like, everyone exactly. knew that was the Switch hardware stream, you know? 100%. So this is almost certainly not going to mention any new, like, next-gen hardware. Maybe there's another revision or something like that. You get your Pikmin 4 Switch, probably something they would never do. Uh, but yeah, they, they said they'll talk about Pikmin 4 and games coming out through the rest of this year. Beyond Pikmin 4 and like that Pokemon DLC, which always happens, uh, I think that's what's coming later this year. We don't know much else about what Nintendo has planned. My guess is based on previous rumors would be that that Mario baseball game seems pretty likely. I think that probably shows up. Uh, does anyone else have any predictions for what we might see? Let me throw out a hope right now, since we just saw Tilt and Tumble go up on uh, the Switch Online. Warrior we're twisted. Give me that. Oh, on Switch please, Online. please. I, yes. If we're doing we'll tilt, that. if we're tilting, you got to go with twisted. Yes. If we're, um, we're gonna, yeah, they go hand in hand. If they tilt, yes. you got to twist. Yes. Mario baseball, huh? Hell yeah. yeah I'm sorry, Bacalar. Yeah, Bacalar is a real care. sport. Eh. Sure, Man, still real on that. sport. Where have I heard that before? Yo, they have like know. a pitcher timer now. Games go so fast. It's great. That's yeah, it's, it's crazy how they had to make their sport better by <laughs> just having people play faster. But, yeah. Wow. Who would have thought? Um, no, that's cool. Like, uh, you know, I think some of my best Nintendo memories, pro like proper NES memories, are baseball games. You know, baseball, baseball stars, stars. Well, your bases loaded guy, RBI. Baseball uh, stars, for base sure. Wars. Baseball stars base is wars. my number one, yeah. Bats yeah. are cool in general. I mean, Griffey are, on look, Super Nintendo was the one. Yeah, they, that actually um, is a very good game. I like that a lot. Still is, yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, like, I, I think, uh, I think I, I'd be interested to see what that looks like, but... I st that's not going to surprise me in a, in the in the way that something else was. So I'm Would looking for that. Would a new 2D Mario surprise you? That is one of not the rumors. Really. Right. And we're kind of overdue for one, right? That would Seems excite like me if it's not the same fucking art style we've seen a million times. Like, right. look, it's a fine art yeah. style they did with the whole new series, which is a, no, a side not. series from the mainline. Um, but it uh, give me something new. Give me like a artsy thing. Give me a cartoon style. Give me a Super Mario Brothers four. Something crazy. You know, oh, I don't just oh, want oh, new oh, Super Mario Brothers that. Switch. You know? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm right there with you. I'm listening. That's what I need. Make it yeah. look like the art style from the NES instruction manuals. Yes, like that's what that. everyone keeps pulling that out. I'm like, boy, give I, me that. I oh, want to get my, oh, wanna get my that... hopes up for that, but boy, oh, I don't like think we'll the do that. like the IKEA direction version of like sure. Mario. Sure. Yeah. yeah. What? I yeah, like it's no, you know, like no, the, like in the like the Mario three box. I know stars. what you mean. I know what you the mean. You're talking Mario. about Mario. Yes, I know what you're talking about, but like 2D. you know, like there's IKEA man in the IKEA instruction manuals. There's it's an like IKEA a person man? with like four lines, and that's like oh. a human. There is a version of the Mario. It's almost like the version of Mario that was on like the Nintendo Power cover, right? Like of course, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you're talking about. I get it. Yeah, uh, classic Mario. Other possibilities that are like out in the ether. Uh, F Zero. Seems like I was gonna that could ask come back. If, if anyone thought we might see an F Zero. F Zero seems possible. Uh, it's been a while. There are, there are so There's many kids that have no idea Captain Falcon drives. Yes, he just punches. He, he drives into the fight. Punches. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like, oh, cool. That's how we got got here. Called an Uber. Um, you don't see Yoshi in an Uber pulling up to a Smash Brothers fight. He rolls <laughs> in no, an egg and is birthed on the battlefield like Revolver Ocelot. <laughs> Yoshi like, and Revolver the, Ocelot. Yeah, one in one. The Uber yes. drives away and he's like, wait, wait, wait. And he opens the back and all his eggs fall out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Chrono Trigger, apparently. Chrono, Chrono Trigger. I saw uh, the rumblings. I say Chrono. Yes. Yeah, I, I, because it's chron Chrono. chronology and whatever. Chrono Trigger, uh, Chrono, Chrono Trigger. Cross. Wake up, Chrono. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, apparently, that might be getting a remake or an like HD 2D remake. Uh, again, these oh, are all just the rumors the that are door. out there. I can't confirm. But that, uh, I, I think that's a game that does not need that. And yet, I think an HD 2D version of Chrono Trigger uh, would be very cool. Uh, I don't need that would to. Be cool. I don't need to play another JRPG that's going to take 120 hours. That's a good one. It's, a, it's one I of like the best. One it's one of the best. Yeah, it's very good. Get a sick frog boy. He's got a sword. Yeah. The, the robot? Oh man! Ah, mm -hmm. oh, God! Chrono. Mm, it's a it's a great game. I think that's my mm -hmm. number twelve game of all time. Wow! Do do we get Metroid Prime Four here though? No, no. 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 Sorry to shut you down, bro. We just don't. No, I think I, I, that's what I was looking for. I think it's probably yet still a bit too early. I think that um, I think that's something that happens next year, but next year for sure. I think so. 
But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with your guys' universal nose. Yes, uh, nose all around. All right, I mean, anything else from, from the direct that you guys think we should uh, get, get excited for? Or is everyone just going to play wait and see? Uh, wait and see. I'd, I'd like to be surprised. I always hope for the one more thing, big surprise. Like, yeah. it always bums me out at the end of the show when you realize there's nothing else coming. It's like at the end of a pay per view, you're expecting something to happen, and then you see the little bug in the They've corner. The uh, yeah. It's like, ah, oh, fuck, there's not yep. going to be a run in, you know? I, I think uh, they're, they're going to do that with Mario. A one more thing cool? for Mario? Yeah. That's That'd what I great. think. If it I'd comes out and it looks incredible and it, look, it looks like a big 2D Mario game, yeah, I'll, I will be very excited for that. But we'll see if that even happens. Uh, uh, we're I'm, gonna I'm know soon though. Thinking maybe two things, maybe shot in the dark here. I don't think it's gonna happen. Maybe some new Animal Crossing content, perhaps. That'd no cool. way. That'd I I know cool. that it's very unlikely, but like those folks. Like, I have so many friends popping up being like, all right, time to restart my island to try and make up some content because Nintendo's been making me starve for Animal Crossing shit. <laughs> and then the second one is maybe they drop a lot more stuff onto, like, Nintendo Switch, Switch Online. Like, I'd love a bunch of GBA titles just out of nowhere. Yeah. Same. Yep. If they drop, like, the, the remaining ones that they've already talked about, like Golden Sun... And there's a couple others. Put yeah. those all out in one blast and then announce another like 12 games that will come over the next six months. Like that would be fantastic. They're probably not going to do that because Nintendo is in no rush to make that no. stuff better. So is there any chance of a 3D Mario, even a tease? Probably not. Um, no? pro I mean, I, there's a chance, but uh, if they've got this 2D Mario happening, if that's real again, we don't know. Uh, I think that they are happy to wait on 3D Mario until they have the Switch successor up and ready to go. Okay. And they just announced that would that. be a good launch game if they're planning on launching that thing in the next a year. Launch, or two. A launch year Mario yeah. game. Like, probably yeah. like it comes out and then six months later we have that Mario game. Yeah, it's that happy. Seems, that sounds right. Remember when flood. they put out a new great Zelda and a new great Mario in the same year? It's like, man, how are we going to decide which one's game of the year? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I see Easy. what this guy did. Easy. You, you, did? You, see what you, did? you just gotta go with that He's player so unknown, funny. baby. That's He's all you so gotta funny. do. So uh, how's that game? Uh, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a fantastic yeah, game. Right. I saw two Bs uh, in it, so that's cool. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Other news: Square Enix staff keeps asking for a Final Fantasy VI <laughs> remake. Uh, Final Fantasy VII remake producer Yoshinori Katase was asked about a Final Fantasy VI remake, and he said, "I think Final Fantasy VI remake would be difficult." Final Fantasy VII Remake is not yet finished, so I'm not able to think about it, but there are many Final Fantasy VI fa fans inside the company, and they often ask me, when are we making VI? That's so, fun. Yeah, they're in there bothering them just like everyone else wants to bother them. <laughs> uh, Sakaguchi was part of this panel where they talked about this, and he also mentioned, like, yeah, that seems like a tough idea. It wouldn't even be, like, his problem. And he's like, look, that sounds like a lot of work. It's a 2D game, pixels. You got to remake all of that in 3D. And it's like, we kind of had to do that with Final Fantasy VII, so how much yes. more work would that really be? Uh, I think six is one that they do get around to eventually, though. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah. I think they have to. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I think it's the one where it's like, uh, okay, seven obviously seemed like the default. To me, six was always the default, but I know I'm an old man, so, uh, but, but yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool for them to, to get around to it. We'll see. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 will get a day one patch after all. Square Enix previously said that they were shipping the full final game on the discs and it would not require a day one patch. The publisher is now backpedaling on that slightly. Uh, mm. Yoshi P now says that they will release a day one patch that's about 300 megabytes that will fix some bugs and performance issues. Uh, players who have been playing the demo might have noticed that if you play on performance mode, the game struggles to hit 60 frames per second consistently. Uh, it seems like something that they might try to address with this patch, try to spruce it up a little bit. But uh, I, yeah, it didn't bother me too much. I, I even like I started playing on graphics mode a little bit because I was just like, I, I want to see the solid frame rate. And it's been fine that way. Um, although if they can get it to a solid 60, I'll be more than happy. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, the, speaking of that demo, the Final Fantasy 16 demo has been a huge hit for Square. Uh, put, uh, push Square a website like a PlayStation fan website ran a poll that had a ton, like thousands of respondents and 75% said they, that they were at least more intrigued into the game uh, mm. for, for the game after playing mm. the demo. Uh, it's like just a widely positive reception to this thing. Uh, and this comes after like last week or the week before we talked about the news where uh, Square was a little bit hesitant about Final Fantasy 16 because they thought pre-orders weren't where they were, where they wanted it to be. 
seems like this demo has solved a lot of those issues. And now the buzz around the game going into the launch, which is later this week, is very, very high. Seems like the game is going to hit pretty hard with fans. I, uh, Jim, that's that is what happened to you, right? You yeah, just you played 100%. the demo. That's what turned it. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. I mean, like I like I said earlier, I'm not the biggest fantasy fan. Uh, like right. tangentially, I'll, I like Game of Thrones enough, but just the way they were positioning the trailers just was doing them no favors. I think they should go all the way into Lincoln Park. You know what? Here's a free idea, of Square. Day of tomorrow, just recut a new trailer with Lincoln Park, and then you're going to sell 12 million copies. Free idea for your Square. That's, uh, that's where the it's gonna happen, at. and then Lincoln like you Park just end kills. it. You just end it with like Torgal, your wolf pet, just like howling at the moon as like Chester <laughs> Bennington does like a scream, and then like we all just tear up because we're thinking about like man, I miss Chester, and then also Chester. Rip. man, this wolf is so fucking sick. <laughs> Do you think there's a fan made music video for anywhere in the Final Fantasy series uh, set to "My Way" by Limp Bizkit, like the Austin yes. Rock package? Yes. Yes. With with Jr. coming in, <laughs> yes. come on, that's easy. Deborah has to manage cloud. Yeah. Uh, if chat wants to find it, feel free to drop it in, uh, into chat here. We'll uh, maybe take a gander at that. Uh, or don't. Right, or definitely, definitely do. I need it now. Uh, Jeff Keeley talks about the diversity at Summer Game Fest. Oh, uh, boy, Jeff, Jeff spoke to CBC about how awesome Canadians are. Uh, but the interview eventually touched on the dearth of women on stage at the SGF broadcast. Uh, Keeley tried to acknowledge that criticism, saying, I think generally we do a pretty good job with diversity in our shows. That was something that's a, a, a fair flag. We also want to be authentic to the games that are being presented on the show and the developers that are making them. So, yeah, I think we're conscious of it which doesn't sound exactly like they're super conscious of it. He did mention that a woman was supposed to be on the stage, but then she had a scheduling conflict. And that's why there were zero women because one woman was busy. Uh, so uh, still a bit awkward. Uh, it's clearly something that they're not thinking about a ton over there, but that he, he says, they'll think about it more. Uh, we'll, I guess we'll see next time. I bet the next time we have a stage show, there will be a lot more women on stage. Um, all right, moving on. Xbox is staying out of the small VR market. Xbox Game Studios boss Matt Booty told The Hollywood Reporter that the VR space isn't big enough for Microsoft. Uh, I think for us, it's just a bit of a wait until there's an audience there. We're very fortunate that we've got these big IPs that have turned into ongoing franchises with big communities. We have 10 games that have achieved over 10 million players life to date, which is a pretty big accomplishment, but that's the kind of scale that we need to see success for the games. And it's just, it's not quite there yet for AR and VR. Uh, the early on, like Microsoft was like, yeah, we might do something with VR. And then that never turned into anything. And it was clear that they were just kind of scared off from the lack of, of adoption there. Um, do you think that when it comes to PSVR two, that we are on that pathway to them sort of forgetting about that thing? Mm. No. no, no. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. E even if the PSVR two is to get heavily, uh, put on sale which it probably will later this year. It has to. It has it, to. It's going to take up too much. It'll get like at least a, a, a temporary discount later this year for Black Friday, I bet. Right. Like a big, like a big deal, probably. Even then, because after like Sony's state of play last week, two weeks ago. You just mean does, the compelling case for owning a Pisfer 2? I don't think there is one. You know, well, there's yeah, still no Astro Bot. I mean, like that Horizon game seems fine, but... I think the unfortunate thing is that there may be more people excited to buy that Apple $3,500 headset over this, over Piz for oh, two. Well, those people should be arrested. Listen, <laughs> I think, uh, you don't want that Jen. you know, in your it's heart of hearts, you don't want that. I just want to watch. You movies, don't want that man. face computer. Come on. You're better than that. Not those movies, folks. <laughs> um, well, I sure, think, Jan. I think VR still oh, suffers from this like <laughs> lack of being able to just like share and be communal. Well, because it's and a I very think, insular experience, yeah, right? Hundred yeah. percent. Like no one's. I mean, I know people stream VR, but no one really, really is able to do it in a compelling way. And it's just it, it is this sort of insular category that I just think will organically find its way through. I just don't know like if this is a thing that. 
Xbox is probably realistically thinking about entering in terms of, of you know, their business, right? It doesn't make sense. No. It's fine. Yeah. Can I ask a yeah. question uh, to the more qualified gentleman in the room here? Uh, what is stopping PlayStation or Sony? Okay, to you guys then. Uh, <laughs> what is what stopping Sony or PlayStation from trying to make like a social hub or like just porting over VR PlayStation chat? PlayStation Home. Or yeah, or, I not not even joking. Just remaking PlayStation Home, but with Pizver Two. And everyone just... hated it, and no one used it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's. I think they just they were burned so hard by PlayStation Home that they are afraid to invest in it, and they were like, "We made the hardware. Someone else do the hard work of of the software stuff and make sure. that make that compelling." Uh, that's my guess, but I think that's been their sort of um, thinking this entire time with the with the VR, uh, at least for PSVR two. Where it's like, hey, we are really good at making hardware, and we'll invest in some software for sure. Yeah. But we're going to let someone else do most of the work on that stuff. And it turns out there's not a lot of teams out there still no. doing that work. I mean, so. I mean, I mean, not to mention, like, all I do in the last 15 years playing a console, porn. playing video games, A is VR porn, but B is actively avoiding other people. Like, all I do is make sure I don't have to hear any of you freaks. Yep. You're all demon dumpster babies. I can't deal with the voices right. that like you're all broken people. I don't want to play with you. I don't want to play with what? you. And I you're feel like I haven't heard bullshit. voice chat in a video game since like Halo Two. Like <laughs> people are the absolute worst on online. The uh, first year of the PS Five when everyone had their controller oh, microphones right. on. Oh fuck, that sucked. Go, yeah, it sucked. I was like, this is the most atrocious user experience. Yeah, to get yeah, out of my house. Like, it feels like they're in my house talking. Yes, yes, they're like they're like the voices were coming out of the TV and like my controller and then they didn't know their microphone was even on, so it's just oh, yeah. this weird room atmosphere. I, it sucks. I even get filled with dread when like one of my normie buddies is bringing in one of their friends like from work or something and I have to deal with this guy, you know, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, cool. I have to like listen to another stranger now and like, well, I guess it's by the transitive property like that person's OK, but you never really know. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to deal with real life humans, especially on a console in some sort of virtual it was, it reality. It was like a beautiful couple of years there where I was like willing to do that. Because sure. I had like some fun experiences, but you're right. I got burned too many times, and now it's like I I avoid it. I didn't think it's yeah. kind of. You know, I think it's over. It's yeah. over. So like it's during over. like when Apex was really really hot when it first came out, and like everyone was so helpful pinging. I thought like, oh, I'll throw on a headset. We'll be more helpful with each other. Complete garbage. People still. You know, but I thought that well. uh, the. Xbox 360 vision camera was a good idea, and I load up Uno, and all of a sudden I see a guy in a Spider-Man suit whacking off, and then it, suddenly it's <laughs> the not American a great dream. Idea. <laughs> it's a it's a wonderful idea, not a great idea. It's the best idea. I, I have okay. a friend who actively uh, Wax participates off in, <laughs> in whacking off with that a Spider-Man. No, um, he actively participates in public chat because I, I just don't I just don't know. No, I have and a I'm buddy like, like and, that too. And he makes like a friend every now and then, and they become like online, you know, Apex Legends friends. And I'm like, oh, sure. that's cute, whatever. And I'll talk to him when I the next time I see him in real life, and I'm like, oh, how's your how's your Apex crew? And he's like, you know, it's cool. Like he's like, you just kind of have to zone out when they go off about you know brown people. And I'm like, huh? What? <laughs> oh no. He's like, yeah, you just gotta zone. I'm like, dude, are you hearing what you're saying? You've gotten to the point where you like. <laughs> We're the only way you can like socialize with nor with with like you know the normal kind of people that are out there is like having to deal with this sort of demon behavior. Like, I mean, Mike Minotti be, hear yourself. Mike Minotti befriended the Poop City Slamma Jamma guys. So. That's right. Well, who sounds like a saint compared to the people that my but but yeah, like uh, it's just if you if that's the kind of like you know um, sacrifice you have to make like sorry count me the fuck out it's nothing I'm but not nice things it. about brown people right like they're just talking yeah. about how cool and how how loving they are right that it's like and, and here he is like almost defending these people and I'm just like mm, maybe you're next on the chopping block motherfucker yep uh all right uh speaking of these motherfuckers Hideo Kojima wants to leave this planet uh, he says, uh, when asked what he wants to do in the future, Kojima got up in his shit and said, I want to go to outer space. All right. I want to go to outer space and create a game you could play in space. What? So please, someone send me up to space. Okay. Somebody should Hideo. listen to this man. Yeah. I want to go to Somebody should finally let yeah. this man make the game he wants. They've He's not Willy Wonka. For too long. So people in attendance said that they think he was joking, and I will say to that, 
but uh, anything that he says could happen. Yeah, like, he's also with, yeah. never told a joke. He, yeah, he's he's also when never he takes it out loud, Deadly it's like serious. He, he wants to do this, and I think that I want to see it. I mean, and he also I wanted to place, make... never go to space? Oh, well. Didn't he also want Snatcher, the disc, to like have a filament on it that would burn while you played it so your apartment smelled like blood? And he also wanted to make the game where if you died, the disc just caught on fire in your yep. system. Like There were some things he wanted to do that didn't happen. Yes. He made the solar panel gun game. Sometimes yeah, the crazy ideas Bok-tai. happen. Hell yeah. yeah. Bok Dai 2. But yes. he legit thinks he's Willy Wonka, and he can just like, you know, go up to space like you take a trip to the park. He's the closest we have. To Willy um, Wonka? Yeah, sure. Video yeah. game Willy Wonka? Yeah. So, yeah. The, the benevolent Willy Wonka, I guess. Sure. This, this conversation happened as part of a, a, a roundtable for the release of that documentary that is about how much of an auteur uh, Kojima is. And it's like, and it was made by Kojima Productions. So it's like a, vi- a, a movie that he made about himself being so fucking awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I think he's just going to get crazier and crazier. So yeah, I think he could get sent to space. I bet he could like call someone up and like make that happen. The amount of famous people that he adds to his, his collection of bodies. Like, he's just yeah. been posting pictures for the entire weekend of just bouncing around uh, New York City with Nicholas Vinding Refn. Yes. Going yes. to bookstores together and stuff. Yeah, like just hanging out like... Spitting Father's Day together, <laughs> buying days. anime together on Father's Day. Does yeah. Kojima have kids? I don't. I don't his no. games are his children, so. man. Yeah, the players right. are his yeah. kids. The celebrities are his kids. I walked yeah. into that, but I, look, I'd listen to a Nick Cage Kojima podcast in space. That'd be all right. Yeah. Definitely, absolutely. Oh, he has a son. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's Nicholas uh, Cage. <laughs> Nor- Norman Reedus. <laughs> Norman. Reedus. This is definitely his kid, or definitely him him Mingus like Kojima. Yeah. Uh, all right. Fire Emblem is coming to Nintendo Switch Online. Nintendo is updating its GBA Nintendo Switch Online library, which is part of the expansion pack that you can get for fifty dollars per year. Uh, this is Fire Emblem: The Blazing Blade, as it's known in Japan. It is the seventh entry in the series, but the first one to come to the United States or North America. Uh, and now they are putting it out on Nintendo Switch Online, and that's pretty cool because Fire Emblem is a very good series. I have played this one a little bit, uh, but when I was like looking back at the series after really getting into it with Awakening, uh, the one I spent more time with uh, with, with, with was uh, Path of Radiance, whichever the whichever one the GameCube one is. That was GameCube, yeah, Dolphin. yeah. I started with so, GBA uh, because like Fire Emblem and, and Advance Wars started around the same time, and they were both extremely good. And those were my first like tactical strategy games. So yeah, yeah. I, I loved Advance Wars from the beginning. Uh, I didn't try Fire Emblem really until Awakening, but. Uh, Hey, now it's out on Switch, or will be, I think, this week at some point. Mm-hmm. So people will be able to get their hands on that and enjoy that. Uh, finally, Microsoft says it's not going to shut down Redfall developer Arcane Austin. Uh, Matt Booty was asked about this, and Matt Booty like oversees it a little bit, but really it's part of Bethesda. But when asked about it, he just said, "There's no plans to shut it down," uh, which I suppose is nice to hear. But it's weird that it's like even where anyone's thoughts went, where it's like one bad game, we got to yeah. close them down. I, I hope that's Sweet not like... Sweet, merciful Matt Booty. Oh. Yeah, exactly. It's weird, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is weird. Yeah, that you hope there's like more chances involved, right? Right. And it's clear like everyone, everyone has like been taking sort of bullets for this game and taking blame for it. And Phil Spencer's been out there doing that repeatedly. And it would be very weird. It's like, all right, yeah, we didn't give it enough support, and now we're closing it down. Now, I understand the studio has had a lot of turnover. Mm -hmm. 70% of the people that worked on Prey had left by the time uh, uh, Redfall shipped. Uh, But still, like, there's uh, a legacy there that they probably would want to maintain and try to build back up. And they, you know, maybe they can do that. We'll see. Uh, All right, that does it for the news now. Uh, I'm going to hand the show back over to Jan, and I'm going to go back to thinking about what's going to be in that Nintendo Direct. God, I hope you know, you know, do you think do you think they'll ever go back to Star Fox, but not like spaceship Star Fox, but like run around 3D. I'm done giving a shit. I've tried so many times to be excited about a new Star Fox ever since 64. And every one of them has been some different shade of shitty. Uh, I just I can't keep getting excited about Star Fox because it's been like six games in a row that have sucked. I think they are going to take a pretty extended break from Star Fox before we get another one. I think they I'd will love another Star do another Fox 64 like, but it's just not happening. I think that's I, okay. I, I think if we, we get, there's uh, multiple Star Fox 64 likes out on Steam now, and I think that's oh, where sure. we get those kinds of games. I think they do come back to Star Fox eventually, and they make it like a bigger game again that has obviously the Star Fox ship combat, 
but maybe they make it more of a, a, a an adventure kind of like Star Fox Adventures. Um, but That's actually started going this. wrong. Yes, <laughs> but actually make it good this time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we're all gonna guess. We're we're all gonna fantasy book what we want to see in the Nintendo Direct tomorrow during this quick little break, and we'll be back with some emails and some shout outs. Oh God, I'm already dreading it. See you soon. Oh and we're back to read some emails from you. You can send your emails to bombcast at giantbomb.com. I looked in my spam folder and realized there was an obscene amount of emails that had went into the spam folder, so I apologize oh, to no. you that uh, where, where your email might have popped into the spam folder. Um, bombcast at giantbomb.com. I'll occasionally check my spam folder now. Uh, a lot of good ones there for, that are super old, but we won't get to those. First email comes from Matt from South Carolina. Hey, Bombers. A lot, and I mean a lot of folks at my office, have gone hardcore into Diablo 4. I recognize it's a good game, but Diablo has never been my type of game. But they talk about it constantly, and it's really starting to wear on me to the point I'm this close to buying it just for the social aspect. I know that the nature of your jobs, you're pretty much talking about playing games all the time. But have you ever experienced a similar situation where you find yourself playing a game just for the group hangout aspect? I just figure if everyone's going to be talking about their fucking druid pro strats, I should get in on it so it doesn't s sound like complete gibberish. Anyway, love your work. Keep on bombing. Matt from South Carolina. The SC is for South Carolina. Last time one of those emails made it on air, you guys got way more confused on it than I thought you'd be. Thanks. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Oh, this from, happens uh, all the Silicon time. Silicon City. Yeah, we're bad at this. We're bad at this. We're not, we're not the U.S. Post Office. We don't know. Um, I yeah. So I, I'm definitely having this realization that I I, uh, I like people. Uh, people are cool, especially people that like are into the things I'm into. And when they're into something, it makes me want to be into that thing more for sure. Uh, this is actually uh, we had uh, Steven Spawn on something. Uh, it might have been Game S Mornings, but it was he was on something a while back, and he's like, oh yeah, like video games are like social currency to me. They're yeah. something I can. Uh, uh, speak to someone else about, and that feels good to have these common uh, things that we can go back to and spend a little bit of that currency, like telling stories to one another. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I definitely, I definitely feel that as well. Um, and that, you know, I mean, that's the FOMO, right? Like, if I, uh, right, I'm definitely missing out on Diablo right now. That is happening to me, and I definitely f fear that a little bit. Yeah, this happens all the time uh, with online friends whenever something new drops for Destiny. And then, like, the Destiny pervs are all freaking out. I'm like, wow, you guys seem like you're having a lot of fun. I'd like to enjoy this fun, too. Uh, but then I realize I don't have 200 hours to get into Destiny. And the same yeah. thing happens with Final Fantasy XIV, where I had all these opportunities to, like, dive straight in. Got a lot of people that are willing to Sherpa me through the endgame content. But it's like, uh. Then it feels like another social obligation where I don't want to let people down and I can't take that on. It's just the time. Like most That's of my friends and people I talk to about games are solo gamers and don't do multiplayer hmm. stuff. Like, I don't really know anyone that does MOBA. I don't really know anyone that does MMO. Uh, so I've, I get, I've never felt that really. Like, it's fun when I'm into something that my friends are into and we can talk about it. But, like, yeah. I just don't really do that. While. Like, I had a little bit when I first got into Fortnite where I'd, I'd play with friends or, you know, like Boniello and stuff. But uh, only a couple times. It's we were just, playing uh, Call of Duty for a while. Uh, yeah, there was a period like right after uh, when I went to WWE, uh, that was kind of like where I was getting my like gaming talk with my friends. Uh, oh, I, you yeah. know, what? I think it's directly it's tied used. to got like it, got it, got it. when yeah. I have this job, you know, when I'm working in games, I'm nonstop talking to friends about video games. So like that meter is full all the time. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, right. when I left Giant Bomb the first time, it was like I didn't have that all the time. So that's when I was like, I played with you guys and, and with Tim and, and all sorts of friends like playing Call of Duty. Uh, hmm. but then, yeah, I never thought of it that way, but yeah, once I got back into it, it's like, no, I'm, that meter's always full, so I don't need that. Meter. <laughs> uh, all right, next email comes from Dan P. Sup, duders? So I recently had a culinary experience that I would love to never repeat. Upon mm -hmm. the pub's menu that my friends and I settled down in, there was, li uh, there was listed a cheese-filled burger. What could this be? Did they mix in cheese? A Juicy with... Lucy, you're describing a Juicy Lucy. <laughs> Did they mix in cheese with a patty? Inject cheese in the burger with a turkey injector? I would soon, no! dis... <laughs> I would soon no, discover the latter. The burger arrives with no fanfare. And so I do what any unsuspecting victim would do. 
I bite into the burger. Slightly to the right of where I bit, molten hot cheese whiz sprays out of the burger, hitting my shirt, <laughs> hoodie Rookie. next Rookie. to me, Rookie. and <laughs> right arm. I sit there comically stunned for three seconds until I realize, oh, my arm is burning. <laughs> it wasn't super bad. I wiped the cheese off as fast as I could and re revealed my newly smooth, sm smothered arm as the hair and a light layer of skin had Jesus. all been burned yeah. off. Hell yeah, third degree get burns. Serious. Fucking get, your, get your meal comped. <laughs> the more I don't know where you got this. If this was at Matt's bar where they invented the Juicy Lucy, they would have warned you. They said, hey, have you had one before? And who, if you say no, they the say, nerve? all right. Who has yeah. the nerve to claim they invented injecting cheese into a burger? No, the Matt, Matt's bar was the original Juicy Lucy. The 5A Club down the street says they did, but they did not. It was the Matt's wow, bar. Wow, what a fucking But they will tell you, you got to make a little vent hole. You do a little nibble and make a vent oh, you hole. Need a and then you need a carb. You wait, you wait <laughs> yeah. a couple minutes, yeah, you need and a you, can, you can dip your fries in there. If you dip your fries in, by the time you come out and the cheese has hit the air and everything, you can eat the cheese fries. But you give it like two minutes, three minutes to be safe, and then yeah, you can yeah. start going to town on that Juicy Lucy. You take your, it's you like take a your soup cheese dumpling. or can opener, you put a little vent in the top yep and then you, you, you flip it down and yes. you just suck all the cheese out and the air exactly. rushes in it's uh like shotgunning a cheeseburger sh shotgunning a cheeseburger exactly. yeah and how do you like your burgers cooked uh yes. every single time this oh. happens at a restaurant whether it's a steak or a burger or something uh they'll say like oh how do you want your burger i literally freeze up i turn to bianca and then she tells them because i always <laughs> i don't i don't know what to say okay it's the same way when they ask me how a coffee like what do you want in your car like do you want milk do you want whatever i, oh. I just look at bianca and she's like he wants this because she knows and i don't Oh, yeah, okay, great. I, and I'm I, glad I you've never paid at attention. The coffee shop in uh, L.A. I had to help out Dan with this. So and you oh. and you've never like you've never like noticed it's the same answer over and over. I don't and you've been remember. Like, I, can I don't say remember this myself no. next time. I spent a lifetime eating ten thousand cheeseburgers. Where you go to McDonald's and you say, "I'll take the burger meal," and they give you a burger. They don't ask you. So if I go to a place that asks you, it just throws. Away. I'm not in uh, that mode ever. And, right. Like, and what I don't about have the time that, to get Bonk used to that isn't with you and you order your burger? Well, so, for example, Grub brought up the uh, the coffee shop in the hotel at Summer Games Fest. And I go down there. When Grub was there, Grub helped me and ordered for me. What, but but when like, Grub, how did Grub know what you wanted? Uh, no, I, I don't. He I just didn't. says normal things because I'm going to fuck up because I went there by myself before <laughs> Grub one day. And they said, do you want milk in your coffee? And I was like, uh, yeah. And they said, what kind of milk? And I said 2% because it was the only type I could think of. And they were like, <laughs> 2%. And I was like yeah that's the main that's the default milk right and like they're like we don't have that we have this this and this <laughs> and i just froze milk. i was like give me what people normally get um <laughs> i just that's... what i did is i uh, i stopped in i'm like dan i don't know what you want let's yeah. talk to this expert here behind the counter and they'll help you and then they just helped them and we got something that was tasty and i think you ended never, up really liking it there's just... eight different words for coffee all no, of them not. are just coffee and Bean i don't know juice yeah, I Sorry, never I'm know what the, the, the name of the words for coffee. You keep I, talking. Dan, I'm into like, it now. I'm into coffee now. I like it. I have it pretty much like every day. Dirt. I don't fucking know. The one kind yeah. I know I've learned that I like, and I had yeah. one today, uh, Starbucks Blonde Vanilla Latte. Oh, That's there we go. Good. Okay. I, but Dan, I don't know if dying? I were there and they asked if I wanted something in it, I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to put sugar in it. I don't know if I'm supposed to do a milk thing. Bonk You're not usually supposed gets to do anything. It's a choice. What's They're that? asking you because it's a choice. And you're you're right or wrong choice. way to do it's, it. You just you're Starbucks. Tell me what I want. No, no, you're wrong. <laughs> you're you're wrong. It's Somehow it's too... your choice, and you are wrong. It's um, it's too complicated. The, 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 whatever you don't mm. know what to do with coffee. I mean, look, maybe you tie that up before you turn forty. That'd be a goal to shoot for. I started drinking um, in my thirties. What about the the meat? The meat, though, that's what I don't get because clearly you've been know. eating red meat since you could crawl. And Java. I don't understand how you don't know well, the okay. temperature okay. that you want your meat. I'll come to Dan's uh, defense here. Besides the, the whole you? fast food meat, you know, Dan comes from Kansas City where it's a lot of barbecue. You don't sure, really ask no, for they don't barbecue. Ask you it's, just, it's just done. If you right? get burn-ins, you're just getting burn-ins. Yeah. You know? Got it. But, like, since then, you've been to a steakhouse. Since then, you've been to a place that doesn't have one default temperature for fast food burgers. I know, you don't know what the difference between rare I know what I don't and, want. and okay. well done I know, is? I know the two things I don't want. I don't want raw, bloody meat. So you don't want I rare. also don't want when I go to a steakhouse with Ben Hansen and he says, I would like it burnt to a crisp. I don't oh, want that. God. Congrats, congrats to Ben, Hansen. by the way. That's the most well, surprising well. thing I've ever heard. I just think. say medium I'm well, you'll be fine. Wait, Ben Hansen asks for well done? No, no, he doesn't no. say that. He literally tells them burnt, burnt to, a crisp. to a crisp. Do they ever ask him to leave? 
No, he just gets because I would charred steak. I'd be like, yeah. sir, I don't think this place is and for they know you. Not to question Ben Hansen. they're like, <laughs> yes. no, you know what? Sir, we don't want to. I'd be like, sir, this is this this is not for you. This place. Uh, if, if if a waiter held a gun to my head and said, "What? How do you want your steak?" I probably would have said medium. I think you should leave that restaurant if they're holding a gun up to your head, Dan. Yeah, I, I, what kind I, of? Yeah, what I say medium. I say medium usually. I, if I'm getting like a really good steak, I'll say uh, rare or medium rare, actually, but. For like a burger, I usually say uh, medium or medium well. Um, is there a difference between think, medium and medium well? Of course, there's a tiny difference. So, we'll do, so why yeah, is that? That shouldn't be that way. Take the it's word medium out. Make it a different word. Then, 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 what? then, then. It's like north it's by northwest. It's, it's mess. It's, is medium yeah. or medium well uh, hotter? There's not or, a huge uh, difference, but like medium is going to be a little pinker than medium well. And well they should just call medium well it's something like, else. It's, think about this. North. East, west, right? So it's it's north by northwest. It's like right? that sort of it's thing. Like it's like it's in between, between these north two and east is northeast. It's between in between medium, well, medium well. It's I like, will die on this hill. Also on the hill where restaurants and steakhouses should have a waffle iron type contraption. I'm going to invent this before I die. Where you order a steak and they put the steak in there before they bring it down. They go chunk chunk chunk, chunk and it's all pre cut and then they bring it to you and you don't have to deal with it. I don't know why that's not a thing. It's 2023. We have the technology. We could do that. Because you what? lose the the flavor of like a nice cut anywhere? of steak. A nice cut of steak, right? If you have like a prime rib or filet, you want that served to you as a chunk of meat so that you can Are parts of it into flying it. away into the ether? Like it's still there on the plate. Just Why can't you wrap your head around the fact that like someone might want to cut their own steak like a big boy? Why is that <laughs> just weird to you? Look, I and, like to eat. I don't like to work for it. I want to just eat it. God, you're, you're do you when you do you want to, if you order a smoothie? Do you want just a bunch of fruits handed to you in a blender? That's what a smoothie. What do you mean? It's, you're, are you comparing? Like like if a you went to a Jamba Juice, smoothie? you would want them to hand you a blender and an armful of fruits, or do you, you just are, want the that smoothie? That is not the same. It's the exact same thing. thing. It's exactly. not quite the same thing. One hundred percent. Oh, oh, I'd like a coffee. Oh, thanks for the sack of beans. Well, I would so enjoy stupid. that. You're so stupid. You only win arguments inside your own head, and that is it. But it's you don't 100% win them in success success rate. It's you don't 100% win them in reality. Success. Okay? Uh, <laughs> Never lost. I, nope. I just, and yet you are still the person who, when asked how they would like their steak to cook, you're just like, I don't know. I, I'm a grown ass <laughs> man, and I don't know how steak works. I think they're all fine. I've never had a steak I didn't like. So I'm doing something right. Yes, gasping and, and asking for help. Yeah, that's the way to Looking do it. It's also with preference. A you can't be wrong, dude. You okay. can't be wrong. Okay, I got a it's question. Preference. I got a question. Follow up, yeah, yeah. semi-related. What is the go-to side then for a steak or across the table? Macaroni here? and cheese. <laughs> Ketchup packets. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like, mac, I like yeah, mac and cheese sounds fine. Fries. Okay. fries. I'm going, into going it. for fries. Mashed potatoes. potatoes. All right, all right. All right. Baked potato. I like mashed potatoes too. Baked beans. Sure. Yeah. Onion rings. Uh, street corn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sa garlic yeah. sauteed broccoli. Hell oh, give, give me some broccolini in this bitch. Yeah, uh, onions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get some onions. Yeah, potato salad. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I Again, how do you like your steak? Uh, me, medium yeah. rare. Grub. How do I like my steak? Medium. Medium. And yeah. Dan, sorry. Uh, I, I can call like Bonk. For the child I, who's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, all good job. Right. You got through it. All right, all right. Dan, just I say just medium well. Bonk, how do I like just, my just, steak? Just always, if you don't know, you, should, you can you just should. always say medium well, you'll be fine. Yeah, like medium or medium, you know, I go medium rare myself, but like medium. Yeah, if I'm getting a, a filet mignon, I'll oh, do medium, I'll do a medium rare. God, all right, what's the how cut? How do I like my sucker. steak? Question mark. What's, filets, <laughs> what, what's, what's, the, what's the cut everyone prefers? I like I a like ribeye. I like cap. I like, okay. um. Free. What? Okay. <laughs> he likes it pre-cut. Oh, pre-cut? Cool. Right. Sure. Um, I like, yeah, I like uh, uh, a T-bone sometimes. Prime mm. rib. Uh, we are always yeah. calling you T-bone. True. But like, uh, honestly, filet, I'll always go filet. Yeah, but filet, if I, I, like, I'm doing steak so rarely now that I'm probably just going to go for the filet if I'm actually going to do it. You know, yeah. I like And like filet. a petite one, like a six to eight ounce. Like, I don't exactly. need anything yeah. crazy. That's yeah. why I like filet, because I just like, I, I kind of have trouble like eating a lot of steak and just swallowing. It's like stringy and it makes me like anxious and stuff. So filet being so small is a real benefit to me where it's like I can eat it faster and easier right. it's and it's like higher quality. You know? It's like, yeah, so it like falls apart. So it's like yeah. really easy to eat. Yep. Uh, I just mm -hmm. love the fat that comes on a ribeye. Um, sure. God. Yeah, I'm not a, a fan of the fatty stuff. 
I just I love I that. I would have a steak that's just it. fat. If I could get order an all fat steak, I would just do that. I'm with you, Dan. All Hell fat wow. all the time. Let's go. That's like pork Finally belly. The crossover. It's like pork belly is like so fatty and everything like that. Oh, I yeah. love that. That's why I'm yeah. gonna die early. Uh, <laughs> no, anyway. you're not, good Jenny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it's gonna be the gout that gets me, and I don't even have gout. <laughs> uh, next email comes from uh, Anthony. People do weird things when they're drunk. I'm in the London tube with no signal with my switch, realizing I'm about to commit to a Diablo 2 class. Isn't it weird when you get drunk? Uh, isn't it weird what drunk gamers choose? I'm gonna go necromancies. Jan, you're awesome. Grub, you're awesome. Dan, you're awesome. Mike, I can't believe you're tall. You're awesome. <laughs> Jerf, I have a mechanical keyboard I soldered myself thanks to you, and you're awesome. Oh, let's go. I don't regret it one bit, and this would be much weirder email if not for autocorrect. Grub, <laughs> you changed my life by saying everybody works hard one day at Grub Snacks. Yeah, Thank you true. for everything, guys. Anthony. P.S. I think I'm going to go barbarian. Yeah, let's there fucking go. go. I got to say, fun. like, just... Dude, jumping into the, the mechanical keyboard hobby and like already soldering a keyboard, like that's impressive. Like that that's amazing. Good for you, uh, Antonis. And what is that? How do you say it? However you say your name. Good I job. just decided to pronounce it Antony. Uh, uh Bacalar, I gotta ask you, is the world of mechanical keyboards now shifting to mechanical mice? Because now my, my TikTok algo is shifting towards like custom keycaps for mice. The caps for, for mice? Oh, yeah. I've definitely seen, like, the problem with, you can customize mice, but, like, there's just not that many buttons on them. Even if you have one of those freak show mice, there are only, like, seven to ten buttons on it. So, what can you do? You, you get one I've of those people with, like, a dial pad switches. on the side, right? Like, oh, yeah. yeah, dial pervs. I've seen that. Yeah. I, we, uh, Vinny and I used to be obsessed with this mouse called, um... Yeah, it was, it was that called thing? Swift Point Z. Like the motion, right? It, yeah, yeah. Like... It also had haptic feedback in it too, which I think mice should have. Like, I know yeah. the trend right now is super, super light, uh, super lightweight uh, mice. But like, I think from a shooter perspective, and not like competitively, but just from an entertainment value, if I could have a mouse that vibrates like a controller, I think that would be great. I don't know why we're not doing this. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, hmm. But yeah, you can change out the switches, the mechanical switches in, in in mice if you really want to be a freak about it. I think I would like a vibrating mouse with editing. Yeah. Like, you know, you're Dude, going like, through, like, you're scrolling through the timeline. As yeah, yeah. Takes. Think about, like, the, the, the satisfying sort of, like, haptic feedback you get from your phone, even, like, scrubbing through a timeline or whatever it is. That's like, true. There's no, like, I'm truly fascinated how that is not a thing in mice. There we go. TM, TM, TM. TM, 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 TM. <laughs> All right, uh, last email of the show has a little bit of uh, a visual component. Let me, I have to do a couple things to pull that up. Uh, let me just pull up the actual email. I like uh, my uh, scroll wheel on my mouse because I can click this button and make it like kind of like one of those uh, fidget mm -hmm. toys and I can just spin it as far as Oh, is it that? Oh, like those are G, fun. G502? It's the G903, but yeah, basically, yes. Same, same exact mechanics. Very cool. Yes. Uh, this comes from Rom from Texas, and to you three gentlemen, I'm going to need you to pull up the stream real quick because I can't show you the photos. I'm uh, looking at it right now. Isn't it weird that Luke kind of reminds me of someone from Street Fighter VI? And uh, I've put up a picture here of Luke from Street Fighter VI. Looks a Holy lot like our shit. dear oh friend, God. Alex Bunyello. Oh my oh my Lord. God. And, uh, Look they, at him. They continue. Guess we know who to call when Street Fighter Six is adapted for Broadway. Ron from <laughs> Texas. If you did the mirror image of that Bonnie Yellow photo too, with his hair parted the same direction, yeah. it would look even more convincing. Okay, wait. Let me see wow, if I can do yeah. that here. There we go. It's uncanny. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> That's yep, weird. Man. That's weird. There it is. Alex, get the bag. Come on. Yeah. Hit up Capcom. Unreal. Yeah, yeah that, send to me. That's they didn't realize that Alex was a Luca like. Mm -hmm. Just have to put oh. a couple of scars on your face <laughs> there, Al Lix. Uh, you know what I what I'm disappointed in myself that I realized I started doing in my regular life is that like any time I'll say a stupid pun like that or whatever, uh, I'll giggle to myself and it, it. I noticed it sounds like the Peter Griffin like. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and it bugs me. <laughs> Matt? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I hate it. I hate it. I didn't realize <laughs> how much Family Guy had actually inf- it infected my life. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Let's Jesus get to Christ. the final segment. Final, final segment of the show. Let's go to the shout outs, everyone. Shout outs yeah, to. Survives. Uh, I, I'll put this on the very top of the list. Ben Hansen, congrats on having a child. Oh, congrats. congrats. Uh, shout outs to The Synthetic Life, coffee and coffee accessories on this Tuesday uh, morning. My wife, his wife, your wife, our wife, Ons Behort Mos Sam Becca, going on a 19 hour flight. Somebody help me. Robo Mitch's toes up at 4 a.m. watching cricket go Australia. <laughs> Ivana Tinkle, Testicles, Jack's Strap, Mike Roch, yeah. Hugh. Jazz podcast that's worth a hundred <laughs> points. The new Garda Safe Dispatch program sucks. All of them Spider Man separate but equal games are well that sucks. Hey, nose fuck you. My parents are dead. Oh, Batman voice. Shake it, parents. Shake it, parents. Uh, you think you're special? You can. You do. I can see you in your eyes. I can see what you laugh at me. Look down on me and walk around me. Those alien bastards are going to pay for shooting up my parents. I want to stop sneezing, please, and thank you. Controller support for the PC version of Diablo 4. Controller support for submarines. Sausages are tasty. <laughs> Don't know... Uh, don't you know Don Bradman is Dragonboard, DudeTubes.com, SummerGameFest.com, Synthetic Life, Synthetic.GiantBomb.cc, The Gimmicks, Jan and the crew for holding it down at SGF, Jerf for having fear of mitching out, Non-Processed Tomatoes, New Father Ben Hansen, Let's Go, The Ramen Goblins, uh, <laughs> by the transitive property, uh, by the transitive master shake property, Big Money Mitch, Barry my pole. <laughs> What's in the bag, Max? <laughs> Personal pet pizza being totally normal. Happy birthday, Carolina Polachek. Summertime and lemon squeezy to the tune of d- doing time. Uh, 20 itchy mosquito bites. Yeah, ha, 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 you found me. The Logitech <laughs> GF710 gamepad. 2.4 gigahertz wireless with USB nano receiver. Controller dual vibration feedback. Four switch d- D-pad with the 250k lost submarine guys used. Remember the movie <laughs> We Bought a Zoo? Why would they do that? Uh... <laughs> Humanaka ang pangit ibigan mong tunay. I can't read Tagalog, guys. Don't do this to me. Andrade versus Buddy Matthews on Collision was a banger. The deep lore of the Riker versus expanding. John Wiki Wiki Wild Wild West. Jan West, Desperado. Jan's Breathless Enthusiasm for shoutouts. Argentina, Feliz Dia de la Bandera. Shoutouts to the shoutouts for shout 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 shoutouts. Did you know that the guy at the beginning, Missy Ellis, get your freak on, is saying from here on everybody is gonna be dancing a little fucked up. Make some noise, make some noise in Japanese. And on this planet, you were made to be born to keep living in the world. It's time flowing on, and so you'd love it all, so you'd treasure it. May all the blessings find their way to you, Jan. I'm telling you now, you're an adult. You're an you're your own man. Make your own choices. But the magic hole is a bad hole to fall down. Magic hole, <laughs> more like cursed hole. Shout out break music interlude here. I don't know. Okay. Nice. We got Whoa. one. Wow. There you go. All right. It's almost That's fantastic. Almost Take a breather. Ooh. Take a breather. Okay. Man, More Polaire, the real best card game of all time, Legend of the Five Rings, shout out to my boy Daigotsu, old Chucky Dicks, <laughs> tell me about the pee, <laughs> balls, 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 do you think it's weird that in Salute Your Shorts theme, an adult man told the child they would have to play, pay the price? Yeah, that's right. The one about right. fucking a fish, that's all of them, Tangela White, 24 <laughs> the game, Whoa. perpetual victim Kim Bauer, 24 updates, you know the spies, bunch of bitchy little girls. Maisie Peters is my favorite English CRG. Getting popped like Fago. Dan Thykert. Jan get the Kino figure. <laughs> my Venture Bro stands. Movie out next month. Sell oh, the nice. team, John Fisher. Trans rights are human rights. Of course. Uh, you have been eaten by a Gru. Go back to the beginning of the shoutouts. No. <laughs> That's no, very good. No. I like that. It's a, it's my way or the highway. That's the only road you take. Well, it's my way or the highway. Got to do it my way or no way at all. No, no way at all. Oh, that's right. My way or the highway. That's the only road you can take. Well, that's the way of the highway. Got to do it my way or no way at all. No way at all. Onion rings going down. De- Going to town on a Juicy Lucy, medium rare in the streets, well done in the sheets. Halo Infinite Season 4 out today. Play Halo, it's good. We need to sort out the hard limit system for shoutouts. Stop it, stop it. It's Dan. It's Dan. I just got from the text from Bunk. I like medium steaks. <laughs> That's now true. you can that remember, me. bud. That was me, yes. Now you you got that? You good? You overestimate my abilities, Bad <laughs> Just the word medium, that's all. Just, just the lot. word medium. And we're <laughs> at the end of the shoutouts, and we're also at the end of the show. 
Great show, Listen, everyone. Yes, please. Before we go, I please. want to just shout out. We, um, we're starting up a new season of Jeff Jeff's Bizarre Adventure this week. And we're doing the first season of Cowboy Bebop. Ooh! Yay! There's only the one season. Yay! We're doing no of the anime, not the the Netflix show. Yeah, yeah. There's only the one season. There, of the anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and number one, I I could not stop thinking about the corgi in the second episode. I don't know oh, so you seen... started watching it? Oh, yeah. She, so I've seen the locked. first two. The first episode is just going to be the pilot because we do spend a good time talking that about like, what the show is. is the... Incredible incredible like i'm so blown away by uh cowboy bebop already i'm just like i'm all who, in um i'm in it who's to the win ken it. bauer who's the ken bauer of cowboy bebop mm-hmm. i i don't have that uh, answer for you yet i'm Maybe okay. i'll get there i'll, I'll report back okay um who's what's her name eliza cuthbert is that her name well, alicia, name, cuthbert. alicia, yeah. alicia cuthbert yeah i got that's close enough um yeah you're right there so yeah, we start that this week. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, it's very Ooh, fun. I'm excited. That's today. fun. That's uh, that is a, an all time classic show. Hell yeah, Faye Valentine. Faye Valentine's yes. Throw the memes up, baby. Um, <laughs> oh, my battery just decided to die. Even though I'm charging this camera. Fun. Oh, okay. Right. Well, well, there, there it goes. goes. There uh, it goes. Folks, what else have we got this week? We got Game Miss Mornings. Uh, tomorrow we'll be g- having a f- different type of fiesta. We'll have a uh, b- 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 Steam Next Fest fiesta. We'll be checking out a bunch of demos. If there's any ones in particular you guys want us to check out, we will check those out. Uh, voicemail dump truck this week on Professional Fridays. Anything else I'm missing, boys? I think, I think for UPF, my plan right now is Crash Team Rumble. Uh, got oh, us some God. codes. So oh, God. We'll okay. see. We'll see. Okay. 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 Uh, all right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. And congrats to you, the listener, for earning 20 podcast points for <gasps> getting to the end of this episode. All the hosts involved, you all get a complimentary seven uh, podcast points each. You know, just, there you Yay. go. We also get the 20? No, no, no. You guys don't get the 20. Oh, okay. Uh, Fair you know what? Uh, you, the three of you, though, Dan, Jeff, and Jeff, you get a three times multiplier that is uh, applicable till the end of the week. Who knows if we'll dish out any additional podcast points. I don't control them. The podcast points control me. And we'll see you <laughs> next week for another episode of the Giant Bobcast. Let's play the music. Now? Now! Now! Thank you.